Welcome to Minor Disturbance Radio. Got a special uh, episode coming your way. Let's do the sponsors and uh, we'll get to the situation here. Why I'm sitting in this seat. Uh, we're sponsored by uh, Ribco, Music Go Round, Rascals, Bent River, Richie Sound, Real Tracks, Quad City Rock Academy, Music Mart, and you can pick up our shirts there at Music Mart and at Ragged Records. They just joined on and they got some of our shirts down there. So if you want to purchase those, go get them. All right, in the studio we have uh, Drop Hammer in with us tonight. How's it going, guys? What's up? Real good. How you doing, Jason? Hey, you did a good job on the sponsors. You like that? You yeah. got you got a little nervous in the middle. Yeah, I did. I did. You, you were like me on the first episode. Yeah. <laughs> this is the first time you let me sit in the big boy chair. <laughs> I was gonna say you picked the wrong guys to have in here. I know, first right? Day, you know? I know this is gonna be hard going. I got an air horn to shut you guys up oh, so I can take over. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we'll, we'll end up using that. Probably. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys just had a. Big show, a week or two ago, opening up over at the iWireless Center. How'd you guys feel about that? How'd that go? Absolutely fantastic. A- extra good. Yeah, it was. It was amazing. It, they, it was ten times better than anything we would have expected. They treated us really good, for sure. Yes, the iWireless rocks. Everybody yeah. there was super cool. Can't Ooh. say enough good about them. Nope. Anything interesting happened backstage in the big rock show, or any? Good stories to tell, or <laughs> well, um, without you know, toot your horn, Brian. Come on. Well, I, you know, you don't want to make you don't want to make you know make fun of idols or anything like that. You know what I mean? But there is a couple, and you're not really making fun of them. But some of the times that we saw some of the, our idols, they were doing odd things right. that were funny to us. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. uh, when we went by Dawkins dressing room, it was me, you, and uh, and Danelle walk in, and we just happened to peek in at the they had the the buffet thing there with the food and yep. the whiskey and all the shit yeah. and the food. And Don Dawkins leaning over the table, going, "Oh, this salad looks good." <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and the first time you see him, you know, you're like, "That's Don Dawkins," and he's going, "Oh, this salad looks good." And he's drooling. <laughs> he was. Right he was ready to go. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> they had nacho stuff in there. Yeah. Like was, salsa. And stuff. We didn't have nachos in our catering. No. What's up with that? Did you guys get some good food over there? It was awesome. At the, at the, yeah. uh, it was, it was the, awesome. Yeah. Chicken Alfredo at the iWireless is better than probably any I've ever had. Lived it up to. Uh, the the legacy, oh no, there's like a five star restaurant I got hiding in that place. Yeah, yeah. don't yes. let them fool you. Yeah, for awesome. me it was them uh, chocolate cupcake things <laughs> with the with the pudding and creamy. Th- these, in the hey, middle by the way, awesome. these these man titties are sponsored by iWireless <laughs> Catering. Yeah. I, I seen Jerry sneak a couple out of his pocket too. Absolutely. He did. He took them for the. <laughs> stole two of them too. Hey, they were there. I let them go to waste. Oh, these to go. She's eating for two people. Yeah, that's right. right. That's <laughs> awesome. No, the food there was amazing. I mean, just. Psh- I mean, it was, it was, it was, I didn't even know they had a, we never, I've never been back in that area. Yet. Yeah. Any of you guys been back in that I, area at all? I didn't expect to even be privy to it, to be honest with you. I didn't think they'd let us back there. But. No. Going into it, I think we were all kind of had our expectations pretty low. <laughs> right. Well, well, we've been down that road before, before that right? road. You know, we're not going in thinking, okay, we're going to be big rock stars. It's usually okay. You know, given past experience, we're going to get, you know, five feet of stage and, you know, we're going to have to stay in the room where... Or, yeah, don't or just stand it. backstage until we go yeah. on or whatever. Don't, you know? right. so, don't look at nobody. Yeah, don't look at anybody. Don't talk to anybody. Well, just. and we remember the, the experience that we had last time. We were in one of these Battle of the Bands back when we were kids, basically. Right. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Um, well, yeah. what, what was it, like 99 or? It was 99, 2000, 2001. Anyway, the, in that area. Yeah. The, 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 grand, the big grand prize was opening for Motley at uh, the, uh, the River Center. River Center. So, you know, here when we won that, we thought, man, this is, you know, we thought backstage is backstage. You could go anywhere, you know. Right. And when we got there for that one, <laughs> they handed us, handed us our backstage passes that was to our kind of roped off section that we couldn't leave. Not even a room. Yeah. And oh, we had a room, but it was, it was about half this size. Yeah, it was like more like a jail cell room oh, almost. Yeah. Not that I know, but I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> but it didn't, and it didn't have TV. And it didn't have any catering or anything. Uh, if, I think they had maybe a sign taped to the door that said drop hammer. I'm not sure, but. Um, was it spelled right? I think it said well, uh, closet or something. Yeah, it used to be the closet. It's, yeah. The yeah. janitor. Or something. But that's not, that's not really the point. The point is, we went into that with open minds. This is our first experience with the. Uh, um, what we would consider like an arena. I mean, yeah, it was a, just 20, a big room, but yeah, it's twenty five hundred people. So. Yeah, it'd be like playing the call or something, right? Yeah. But I mean, and by the way, we're not talking about the I wireless right now. Let's clarify yeah, that yeah, this yeah. is the River Center, and this was a long, long time, time ago. ago, right? So, um, but when we got there, we were given our passes, and we were always, and we were off also uh, given our set of rules. 
<laughs> yeah. Which w- and literally included, uh, you don't talk to Motley Crue. Right. And no, you no, just don't. Look at Did you guys abide by that? No. No. <laughs> no I, well, yeah. I got in trouble because I talked to Tommy Lee. <laughs> he was yeah. pretty nice. Yeah. 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 But, but and Terry's yeah. like, hey, there's Mick. And Mick was like, yeah. hey, how are you guys doing? Well, so it was more the road crew, the management, the saying crew crew don't look at evil. them. They yeah. were mean. Right. right. They were being real pricks gotcha. to us. And, and they, for good reason, I think, because we, we were so green. Oh, we yeah. just brought our buddies to help us and shit. Right. And we went, when we went up to set up and put our amps up and shit, one of my helpers. I think this is this is legend. We don't know if this happened or not, but I'm pretty sure that it did, and that's why they got pissed. But when we went to set our front you know, amps and shit up on stage, uh, my side couldn't find an outlet. Oh, and so they pulled something from an outlet and plugged my amp into it. Okay, and it happened to be Mick Mars's guitar rig. Okay, and it uh, went pop, and mm. the rig went down. So um, we didn't know. Right. We, they wouldn't show us where the power was, so we just plugged it. We made it happen. You know yeah, what I mean? We've, you know, we've been in numerous situations where we've had to play with other bands before, and it's just like, you know, fend for yourself, find something, and make it work. Right. So, right. so the experience at the I Wireless is what? Much better. 180 <laughs> oh, degrees yeah. different. Like, okay. yeah. Opposite the side of the moon. Yeah. Just I mean, just better awesome. sound check, more time, re- more respect. We were, or? we were sort of hurried, but there was that's it's okay. They, right. You know what I mean? But the, still, the, the production was really cool. Gosh, and, they made us rock. And they, I mean, they got the sound really quick, from what I understand. And yeah. So, yeah, no, no complaints there at all. And how to fill up there on the big stage? It sounded weird, but it was awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if, if I was a whiner, right. a little more monitor time, you know, sound checking wise, would have been neat. Because I couldn't hear it super well, but you could feel that it was just everything was <laughs> you feel the power oh, yeah. yeah but y- y- we've been in this band long enough we we know we are prepared to go into any gig with no monitor <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. yeah we've done that enough times opening for Whoever. bands or yeah. you know when they bring uh, them springs last a while it's like reverb and I, just, <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize I just, oh, wah, 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 wah. I'm trying not to hit that again yeah. but uh, uh yeah never mind no, go ahead. Okay, but but I don't remember what I was saying really. You were, we were talking about monitors. Okay, yeah, we're, well, we we're, can play blindfolded in the dark in your basement. Well, that's how we practiced. <laughs> we we would we would always practice. I mean, I think that any band should do this. You I mean, see your hand in front of your face sometimes. We really? just shut all the lights off. Oh yeah. I mean, unless you're you know. Um, we had like one like red par. One can red, or something. yeah, one red can. Down there. Yeah, we we practiced with one par can and and yeah, just wow. shadows. And we didn't you know <laughs> another thing that bands do that I find interesting. I, I mean, I can understand when you're writing songs, you could face in and each other on each other to kind of get the vibe of writing a song or, or getting a song down. Yeah. But we we would always practice. I hope I'm not blasting this mic. It feels no. like I'm really pushing no. it. Um, it. We would always practice facing away from each other, like we're going to be on stage. And that's sometimes bands don't do that. Right. Yeah. When we and then when they, songs initially, we'd be all looking at each other. But when right. it was like, that's okay, what I said. Rehearsal for the show. We don't yeah. Look, we're, if we're, we're trying to get the energy off each yeah, other, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. I can tell like, Terry digs this song. You know what I mean? I could feel that everybody's jiving. That's where it's good. But then when we go to actually prepare for gigs we start to practice facing out like we're actually on stage in the basement so i'll be facing a wall you know right and he'd be facing a wall (laughs) right (laughs) and and there's because then bands have a tendency to kind of when they go to play live they go back to like at practice they kind of face in on each other yeah because that's where their comfort is right and you know you got to get real used to when you practice looking at each other then all of a sudden you you're in front of a mic and there's a spotlight and people going and you can't see, in the spotlight, you can't see yeah. spot. So yeah. you're kind of yeah. screwed anyway. You're like, I hope I don't fall off the stage. Right. Well, and over there, that was a pretty big stage. You guys are pretty far apart from each other. Yeah. yeah. I, there was a ton of room. Yeah, that was, it was, all it was, it was crazy. I got to be honest. I, I've been on a lot of stages, you know, less than some, more than others, but. Um, that stage scared the shit out of me. <laughs> well, intimidated. I, when just, I when I got up on it, it was I, so nice. I just it was flat. When I walked across, when awesome. I walked, and it was seven steps until I couldn't see a marshal in my peripheral. Yeah. You know what I mean? A Marshall Cab or something like that. And you look up and you go, I'd die if I fell off of that. And you know what I mean? Yeah. And Or, you know, you kind of see the lights, the, the steps going all up and stuff. It's just a really weird feeling. And, and wow. when you're standing on that stage, you, you, you just kind of, you can see that there's a long way between real life and there. Right. And we were getting to dabble in what that felt like. You know, and not that we're anything special or any better than anybody else, but we actually had the experience of, of kind of taking that in for our 18 minutes or night, 17 right. minutes, whatever it was. Which it wasn't wasted now, you know, 15 years later. Right. 15 years later, yeah. you know, since our last one. We yeah. went into it a lot different this time going, you know, we're going to, because I think, well, we've got seriously like, what, four pictures from that crew gig. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's, like, there's, like, there's like no record of that whole thing no. at all. Yeah. And 
Yeah, it's probably I mean, okay though. Well, because basically they give us are you the talking about light. It is, it, it, it is, it is. It is. I mean, because that's still pretty cool. We got to open up for. Are you, you're talking about the Motley Crue gig. Yeah. Okay. You know, and we had all whopping four pictures of that whole thing. And looking back on that, it's like what? Yeah, and we nobody we, we knew even took them. Right. You know what I mean? And so we ended up finding four pictures of that show. Um, that were, you know, most of the pictures the back of some guy's head with the head on backwards right. and then like we're it's just like kinda, right at the back of the crowd too. Right, so right, like, right. Way up there. And then there, you know, arms and, people, right. and, and what pissed me off is in one of the pictures one of the dudes was turned around like kind of, you know, a couple dudes were turned around talking yeah. in the picture and like not paying attention to <laughs> So I'm like, well, I'd like to use the size of this crowd but the two guys in the front are going so but no that 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 experience was completely different and then you know but that wasn't even the same kind of stage really to me no it wasn't the only difference was in that situation they we actually got the lights down yeah uh, feeling and there was already four thousand people people there you know what i mean and so and so yeah when the lights went down you heard the Ah, gotcha. 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 That was cool. That when was when cool. Whoopi Goldberg held the flashlight, he said, "You guys go <laughs> until, upstairs." Yeah, yeah, until until they found out it wasn't Motley Crue yet, and then it kind of started to go away as yeah. we walked across the stage. But they are booing us. No, it's not how it went. Actually, we were we were probably at the pinnacle of of our popularity, whatever popularity we had at the time, and and yeah. there was a lot of people there to see us. And uh, Z Man introduced. We had us radio and play that. and yeah. shit, yeah. So, and at that time, they were playing not even on the radio on ninety seven X. Pretty well, Z Man when Z Man yeah, was almost right every at, afternoon. Yeah. yeah, I should call it Z Man X. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, because yeah, it was yeah. the only reason that we got that done was because Z Man was a, a big supporter he of Drop Hammer. He did yep. a lot of stuff for yep. us. I mean, you would you would be driving home from work and be like, "It's time for the perfect hair set," <laughs> and blah blah blah, and he's like right off the bat in shock or something. I'm like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> yeah, Z Man. People are, who the hell is this? <laughs> These guys. As a matter of fact, he, he sent me a tape of, of somebody calling in going, uh, yeah, yeah. He goes, uh, 97X, this is Z-Man. And the dude's like, yeah, man, that, uh, who the hell is Drop Hammer? I'm like digging back in my memory and, and who, trying to remember who the hell these guys are. And so, well, he, started, he started cussing and stuff. And uh, Z-Man was like, no, no, why? And, and then fi- finally the dude goes, Man, it's about time these guys kick ass, and he was—he loved it. Oh yeah, oh, right. you know what I mean. And, that, yeah. and yeah, he was like, no he thought we were, you know, I'm, the you know, I'm right. trying to start a band. He said, and I'm getting all these guys with the chains hanging down, and and they want to play some corn riff or some shit like that. And whoa, like, Z-Man's whoa, like, whoa, 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 you can't say that on the air. He's like, I'm on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were just shooting the breeze. <laughs> so overall, it was worth uh, the complete experience of taking that in and going through the battle of the bands because I know you guys aren't fond of them. So it was definitely, but but Kenny worth hooked it. us up too. I mean, right. Kenny like he you gotta you gotta be nice you gotta be to careful us. what you say there. And when you say that you, battle of the bands and Kenny hooking us up, he, no, he, I mean, he, he, he got, treats he, us so yeah. nice. And, but he's and, the one that got a hold of us and said, right. "You guys should really do this thing because it's the perfect fit." Yeah. Well, I I gotta be honest. I mean, the call came to me, yeah. and 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 to be honest, I was really reluctant only because. Drop Hammer hasn't played a show in uh, a over a, a year. Is it a year and a half? Year, year and and, that, and then before five. that, how long was it? Seven years. Yeah, seven years. We didn't play in seven years. We came back and played one gig. Yeah. You know, to, and I considered it to be our farewell. Bye. I'm done with this shit. Yeah, gig. I'm pretty sure I threw away my pleather pants. I'm almost yeah. positive. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, and, and none of us can fit. I can't fit into mine anymore. So. <laughs> a lot happened in that seven years when we didn't play. And you work out. That's I, <laughs> I, I, I gotta say, I, I can still look down and see uh, my stuff. So. I killed. A, I killed a lot of jars of peanut butter between <laughs> yeah, that and now. Yeah. You know, That's what I hear. he's a connoisseur, man. I know. He's so don't breathe on Jerry. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but basically, to get back to that, when Kenny called me. I, I was just really kind of in, I would have been I don't know I had a little bit of embarrassment if I decided yeah I'll take this battle of the bands drag all these guys out of what I considered retirement right and uh, you know because that's the whole thing I'll, I'll come back to that but Drop Hammer has never quit okay Drop Hammer just kind of stopped playing all right and it, you know what I mean well, we, there was never a like fight or there was never right. an official no, breakup right. no. And, no no it, what there's been is there's been uh, I don't know how to explain what it is it's it's like you just have to walk away from it sometimes, you know what I mean, and 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 to appreciate what it is, because when you're in in it, you can lose focus of what it's supposed to be. And we did that for years and years and years. And around here, unfortunately, if you're going to be an original band, you're you're right on the edge of falling into that quicksand that's being a cover band. Right. And we, you know, 
dabbled in that. <laughs> we and our toes in the quicksand. We, yeah. and, and, that's and, a very <laughs> PC way of saying that. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, well, we sold out completely. Because <laughs> one of us wanted to be a bar star immediately. I didn't want to go play to people that don't. I wanted immediate gratification. It's really hard to go out and play original music for people that aren't recepting it. Right. Or you don't know how they're recepting it. You know what I mean? You're looking at them. Terry always told me this. He said, dude... He, before we'd go on, he'd say, because um, I'd be like, man, them people ain't going to like our shit. You know what I mean? Drop Hammer's not a, a, a sports bar, you know you right. know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of band. And sometimes we were playing in front of audiences that were just wanted to go out and dance. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's true. And we were still considering ourselves an original band that played some covers. Right. Did you ever cover Jesse's Girl? Oh, we, God. A hundred times. There we go. <laughs> Here we go. Well, I just had to bring it up. I, that, that's... Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. about. That's what. That's what. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure is this thing on? <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, um, I don't know. We never played Jesse's Girl. Um, that's a lie. <laughs> but we did do. I've done What's everything for you. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's a hoot. <laughs> but let me get back to yeah. that. What I was trying to say is that we we fell into it. I did. And I drug these fellas. I'm, Terry was my partner in crime in t- at times because you you wanted to work every weekend. Here's what my dilemma was. Anybody that's listening that ch- has tried to keep a band afloat, okay? You get a band that you've got the players that you want. Mm-hmm. And now, all of a sudden, you're, you're going to make it an original band. And um, you're going to just do that. So the, the opportunity to play around here is going to be slim. Especially back then. It's Especially back then. It's a, lot it's a now, way different thing now. But yeah. back then, We'd be yeah, among us if we were 20 years bad. younger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so we we were sta- standing there at the precipice of this thing and, and going, okay, we're only going to play so often. And I wanted, I wanted that thrill all the time. And I had people knocking on the door for Mr. You know who? You know what I mean? As a drummer, and he wants to work, oh, yeah. so he could go out and play, and then pretty soon he would get booked up all the time with a cover band on the side. Oh, and it would, and then I would feel like I was losing man, my drummer. Cheating and, on you? Yeah, and there was, I'm a hooker. God. I can't help it, man. Yeah, so he's like, he's like that too. We have that disease that we want to play out, right, right, all the time. And Jerry Smith didn't give two shits about that. He wanted to play. <laughs> he he wanted to be in Drop Hammer, right, and that's it. And when we were backstage putting the set list together, I've talked about this on probably probably every episode. So we've done. I've, yeah, I've heard it a few times. But when we when we put our set list together, um, backstage before we go on, I kind of get the vibe of the place. You know what I mean? And go, yeah, we're probably opening with Jesse's Girl tonight. Yeah. And uh, go back there, and he would just look right at me and go, "If you open with Jesse's Girl, Brian, I swear to God, I'll quit." <laughs> <laughs> a lot of those nights. His, huh? his actual deal. I remember that day. His actual business deal with me. If we could talk about that. Go for it, bro. When we were doing the cover gigs back then, um, his actual business agreement with me was. I, you know, how much do you want, Jerry? He said, are you playing drop hammer songs or are you playing covers? Yeah. And I say, and I would have to deal with them. I say, like, okay, so, because he, he would say, if we're playing, if it was a lot, let's put it this way. It was a lot more money if we played covers oh. than it was if we didn't and we played drop hammer stuff. He would have done it for free. Yep. And, ah. you know, and, and, but I didn't make it free, but so if like he a, was, you had a friend's agreement or an actual, no, it was, it was just a, a verbal, okay. I mean, this is this yeah. bit like, right. yeah. okay. okay. So, you know, and I, and I wouldn't, I would never rip him off. What, you don't really don't know what, I, what we spit on and touch. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. wow. Sorry. Yeah. Cause I live I'm telling you, it's, 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 like, it's them white headphones, man. It turns you weird. <laughs> I uh, swear to God. I, too far away. I, never I, didn't, about I that. didn't get all the intimate stuff you guys. Well, he, he just wanted to, well, anyway, back to the story. You know, when you're, when you're playing, around here there's a lot of offers coming in for people that want this drummer because he's he's you know this right. Terry, to me this is this is my favorite drummer in the world right here right you know what i mean i've i've gone through a lot of shit with him i've, mm-hmm. I've sat and watched him tune his drums over and over and just like you know felt like complete how did i get this guy in my band you know what right. i mean how how yeah. is it that me and him came together mm-hmm. and on top of it he loves the music like i do right. you know what i mean and so does jerry and and we all loved our music you know we were stood behind a hundred percent. Yeah, All absolutely. It, and if and if anybody were to say drop hammer sucks, we, we he'd be the first one to whoop their ass. <laughs> right. You know, I would probably go. Oh, yeah, you're probably right. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Start crying and shit. You know what I mean? But anyway, I um, bristled up a couple times. Man. Yeah, you did bristle up a few times. <laughs> yeah. But um, so you know, people wanted him. So I felt like I was in a position that I had to keep him busy. Right. So I'm thinking, okay, I got to get booked every weekend playing gigs, and somehow I'm going to try to keep the prestige that we. I, I, 
when I say, you know, the, I guess the honor to the drop hammer idea right. mm. alive as well. So we were playing uh, covers and, and originals, and that kind of threw us off track. Anyway, get back to my reasoning for why we stopped playing. It was because Jerry finally realized how bad we were draw, you know, dragging ourselves through the mud doing that because there were certain points where we found, Terry and I found ourselves you know drunk it, it, <laughs> right is you know because you have to Some when you go out there and when, when you want to be in drop hammer and you want to do this thing so bad yeah and you step out on stage in your plastic pants and your eyeliner mm -hmm. and you start to sing jesse's girl hurt so good maggie may or, or hurt so good or any yeah. of that stuff maggie may was cool maggie oh, may man. was cool man no, no, i gotta <laughs> say we did rock that song that, i would play that now we, we should have opened with that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it rocked uh, but uh you, you know and so no, me and Brian were uh, immature a few times. Well, what it, I guess it drove us to drink. Free, basically, free tequila is a, is a bad thing. <laughs> it's a very bad. thing. I'm not thing. gonna lie, it was yeah. a bad thing. Right, and so there was a couple times where uh, Terry and I found ourselves a little bit too inebriated to uh, to be of any use <laughs> to any musical instrument it was or just a couple or band. Apparently, there was one time that has long been lost, but oh, it's um, not lost. It's on. <laughs> Snipping it in on the video. Yeah. He don't even have it. I haven't uh, even seen it. Uh, I don't. It's like a. It, well, let's describe what it is. It's on an old high eight table. Oh, right. Right. It. All right. We we all know it. Anyway, all right. We're, go ahead. we're at WD. Right? Yeah, WD. Tell the story because he remembers. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I remember. And uh, you know, it's it's one of those places. It's a dinner slash bar thing, hmm. right? All so right. and and Brian's talked about this before. When you go in there and you're starting, and the dinner people are there, you kind of tailor your songs to that right well there's still the dinner folks in there and brian's up there talking in between songs i don't know how far we were into the set and he starts going i forget what magazine it was but he's like yeah, blah 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 i really you know read this magazine and you girls like to have your clits rubbed or something like that right <laughs> Clitoris. Cla let me clarify that real quick for you i said i was reading in cosmo before there it is. Okay. with the paul stanley boys <laughs> yep because uh, everybody knows that watches this show i thought i was paul stanley a few times on stage living out of fantasy anyway my quote was i was reading in there that supposedly you girls have something called a clit yeah oh. yeah and, 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 the guys are like eating their face kind of going yeah Whoa. and, and yeah, <laughs> people are trying to eat dinner still was it wasn't the mayor there didn't you say that like oh, the mayor's man, wife or something was having I a know cocktail? The owner guy Dave was not impressed. Right, so, with so that that's gynecology. That's, 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 that's the that's the start of the. You night. need the air horn. Then the then the <laughs> no <laughs> not yet. All right, here we go. Then, okay, so that that's kind of the start of the night, and very quickly at some point too, the shots started flowing between these two. Uh huh. Double shots. And I believe it was not a pretty. Thing. I don't know. I don't remember who it was, was doing production for us for sure. or whatever. But right. we, we had you know a guy makes a front and we had a guy make some monitors and he was over on my side of the stage. And we would get done with the song, and I would immediately go as far back to the back of the stage as I could, mm -hmm. out of the lights and away from everything. And I'd just look over at this guy, and he's just shaking his head. Because he knows it's just, it's it's going down, right? Right, right. <laughs> There's, and they so, have a 15% descent angle. Right, right. <laughs> Jerry didn't want to be seen with us, I right. think. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of the, the, the part of that. So... Fast forward to the end of the night, and Brian is literally on his back playing guitar. I fell off the side of the stage. They, they had a side step, so it went down there. Yeah, yeah, so what? I remember the song we were playing. Though. The last, no, you don't. The last two songs. <laughs> the last, hey. because the last two songs, he's on his back. <laughs> All right, he was. Dude, he was. He was on his back. And Terry, I don't know what Terry uh, was doing, was but, not, it, but it was not good. I actually have a more her heroic ending to the story, but yeah, go but, ahead. Yeah. The way the way I saw it. But. <laughs> so. We, usually we close with Thunderkiss 65 okay. by White Zombie. All right. and so that's what we played last song. End of the night, we play it. Brian's still laying down. Mara <laughs> comes up with a handful of money and goes, Push! You'll never fucking come back! <laughs> and, and it did the confetti thing. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and when he got mad, he was, was, he was making it rain. And rain. And <laughs> to me, to me, I was passed out, but I was playing it off like I fell and I was injured, but I still was going to make it through the night like a hero. Yeah. And, the bar, and the bar owner was so impressed, he started making it rain. And <laughs> <laughs> I see it more like Jerry seeing it. Yeah, I guess so. so I remember that. So yeah. next, next day, I, I call Brian up. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, dude, you need to. Because this was like our highest pay. <laughs> First word out of oh. dude. So, yeah, back then we were getting like 600 bucks a gig there, yeah, and that was a lot of money. That was, that was our high paying gig. Uh, and I'm like, <laughs> not you, you better call up, and you better beg, and you better plead, and get that gig back. 
Dave Brown was, you know, he was very much like, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> and so then I called Terry, and mm. I'm like, what in the heck were you playing during Thunder Kiss? And Terry says, we played Thunder Kiss. <laughs> Yeah, that's the first thing I have. We played Thunder yeah. Kiss. And then, ter- oh, and, then, yeah. and then Terry called me and was like, did we play Thunder Kiss? Yeah, it was, it was like, was I didn't. I don't know what you played. I was... I was uh, <laughs> he was singing Thunder Kiss, you know, but we were playing probably we, Deuce or something. Uh, we were playing something. <laughs> yeah, no, so we were writing a new song. So at that point, I think, is kind of where I was going. Like, you know, the cover thing, probably we should stop. Well, yeah, because we yeah. honestly, and I'm not making excuses for being buttholes. I'm just saying, <laughs> honest to God, we would have never got that smoked playing our stuff. We just no, we, we, right. we never do. So that. you just well, you, we can't. You can't well, play yeah, that for one thing. You yeah, you gotta have your shit together when you're playing our stuff. Well, you gotta um, you, you gotta remember too, guys, that that's part of the reason that we did start drinking, Terry, so heavily is because we turned into a bar band right. and we were playing covers. And to get through that, for me, I know that my experience was that I had to get inebriated in order to put myself through that. Really, I mean, I felt like how could we go from you know, trying to get any kind of appreciation for me in an original band and then just completely selling out. But at the same time, you look at bands like Lynn Allen that makes a living doing it, yep. but then, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard. It was hard for me to battle that balance, and I, it completely tipped the way which, which, which catered to me best at that time, which was feed my ego, let me feel good about myself and play all the time and ensure that I can keep these guys busy so they stick around. Right. That's, that's Even when you was. didn't keep us busy, we stuck around. You know that, right? You're, you're yeah. starting to get that. Ninety percent of that was me wanting to feed the ego. Probably. <laughs> I'm I, just saying, me and me and Jerry. I'm not bragging for us, but uh, we uh, we believe in you, man. And uh, at, we at got one, your, we've had your back for what? It's got to be pushing fifteen 20 years. years. Yeah, so you longer, but yeah, fifteen years. So let's I go back. For me. How did uh, the whole thing start? Who come up with the concept for the band? Whose ideas? Hope you got a look at Jerry's backing up. Uh, <laughs> Jerry was, was the best quick, afterthought we ever had. I, quickly, I don't want to <laughs> listen. <laughs> listen, it's a three-part series. Yeah, yeah. but, sure but, but listen, I'll sum I'll sum that up really quick, and and because people are going to be listening to this, and and some of them won't give a shit about what Drop Hammer is, but they might enjoy just the banter that we're talking about, right? As far as gigs and stuff like this, um, people people don't really care how this band got together or anything like that. They just know that. It, you know, it, it exists. Mm-hmm. Um, it was basically I wanted to start a band, and I did it. And I, I had to find the right guys, and I couldn't have dreamt of finding a better like band than what I ended up with. It was right. a, it was a child, my first attempt at an original band. Mm-hmm. And I and you know when you're driven, when you're young, right. you know what I mean. You want that's all you want. You're after it. You, you spend all day long writing songs and honing your craft and trying to find the best people that you can get in your band. And, and you feel like you were successful in doing that. I, I was until one of them quit. Oh, and then and I'm not and, and then luck struck again. I couldn't believe that. I thought that when Tony left the band, we were dead. Right. And thank God that Bill Pfeiffer turned me on to, or Jerry Free somebody no, turned me on. No, it was Pfeiffer. It was Bill. Okay. Well, somebody turned me on to Jerry Smith, and and you know you're looking around at all the guys in the quad cities. You, you have to find a guy that's got long hair. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That, we can't help it. There, there's a. Certain and this is 1997 98. or 98. 98. Yeah. You know, 1998. There weren't too many long hairs left. No. No. You know what I mean? There were still the dudes with short hair that had a picture of them with long hair, so they approved the chicks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It was, it was at that time, but you know. Yeah. Anyway, so at this time it was hard to find dudes that still had the look. You know, we were like, shit, we're gonna have to have one of them guys with no hair and you know and all this stuff. But but luckily we found Jerry, and he was one of his favorite bands was like he was into Maiden and he was into Priest and all that stuff. And I'm like, well, God, he's he's got to be pretty There's good. There's nothing wrong with this and when, guy for one thing. <laughs> and when and when Bill Pyford looked at me and, and I said, is Jerry good? Because he's got to be good, right? You know what I mean? I can't have a hack. Right in this band, especially you know, being the the kind of music that we play. I totally pulled the wool over their eyes. Yeah. <laughs> he's really not that good, yeah, but no, he's, I'm not. no. Nah, he's, he just fakes it, man. I so, do. And, and, then, well. and then the second question is, Shit. I see, I see. He, I'm like, well, Bill said, I know this guy Jerry Smith, and I'm like, well, yeah, tell me about him. What's the but? He doesn't have any hair. <laughs> And he can't sing. He's you, know, right. you know what I mean? nine kids and he works same shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. That was always the worst thing, it was man. something, man. We, yeah. And when we got Jerry, it was like, there was no nothing. It right. Was just, and Bill, Bill looked at me and said, he's got long hair. First thing, he, I didn't have to ask. He's like, he's a long hair. Uh, and I said, well, can he, can he, is any good? And Bill looked right, man, right at me and he said, he's really good, Brian. 
And, yeah. and when he said that, I was like, okay, he's probably just really ugly or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And Bill's just, you know, kind of throwing a, throwing me a bone. But when and I finally met him, he looked cool. He looked like Jason Newstead to me. He had kind of that Jason yeah. Newstead yeah. thing going on. And I'm like, well, I need that because my voice is very wussy. So, you know, in, in order for the band to look tougher, I needed somebody like him to, you know. Give it some edge. And Absolutely. Yeah. He sings good, too. And that's that's and the second like, thing. Can like he sing? Bonus. He look Yeah, he looked good. He can sing. And he plays a, he plays bass like a motherfucker. It sounded like he did a lot of babysitting of you guys. Who did? He, Jerry. Oh, yeah. He's our dad. <laughs> yeah. He's, I'm a pretty good hey, dad let, let's, at let's, home and not in the band. Let's put it this dad. way. Tony quit for a fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> I see some finger pointing. I wasn't even there. I'm just kidding, man. Jesus. I wasn't even there. No. I'm at it, home. I get a phone call. Oh, Tony quit the band. Anyway, we're talking like, about really? we're, we're talking about Tony Higby, and uh, uh, he went on to yeah, do way better he, things he, than I'll ever do. Okay, he doesn't care. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a super talented musician. I, you know, it, that's what it was. There was a battle for who wanted to to try to be the the lead guy and when you got people that are that creative at that age right they they tend to want to fight it either yeah. it either grows into something really huge and cool yeah. or it, it falls apart like yeah. what happened here that's what you happened. know what though it's it's okay tony tony's doing awesome and right. i don't have you know, i don't think yeah. any of us have any ill will towards him i, I mean he was guy, on david so. letterman for crying out loud oh, absolutely yeah. 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 yeah he's doing good not only on it but he like did a solo on it yeah he yeah. was shredding on with, with a gibson 330 uh 335 he, is that what he, i i don't want to get him in trouble but he made tom Kiefer look kind of lame really yeah tony was a show like i said what i was, <laughs> it, was <laughs> it was cool though when i watched it i wanted to be really mad about it and I wanted to make fun of him, and I wanted to do that. I'll be honest, you know, because that part of me still exists. I'd have to fight it, mm -hmm. and I push it back, and I say, Brian, what you're seeing here is something beautiful. You know what I mean? That yeah, could right. be you. If that were happening to you, you'd want everybody to celebrate that with you. Yeah. Right. And and I, I looked at Tony, and I remembered the friend that I had back then, and, and I remembered that guy, and I, I really went, congratulations, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was a cool thing to see him on. Absolutely. And, but you know what, though? His road is his road, and we have a awesome friend forever. That right. the drop hammer would not exist without Jerry Smith. It would have right. been dead in the water. And, and, and luckily, right after I quit, or right after I joined, Terry quit the band. But I like, didn't quit. Yeah, you know. Oh, this is that gray oh, area. Here we this, go. Is that, this is that gray area where we don't what we don't talk about. Oh, Did you okay. put that on your notes? Uh, this is uh, no, yeah, we you don't guys wanna... said just don't know. Just let it rip. <laughs> I got, the good thing I got is tired of playing it wasn't John long. Cougar. It wasn't shit. long. So, so I'm just he came back and then all was well. So that's good. We should have been rocking. There's we shouldn't have been playing Jesse's girl, man. And you and and you and Jerry started to agree on that, and then I was the last holdout. So yeah, so, so and then you need the whooping, not the rest. Of it. Well, <laughs> and I'll, I'll take that. I'll take yeah, that. I mean, yeah. we're all being open and, and all that shit. This is like, like, okay, ladies and gentlemen, Doctor Phil, come on. Yeah. <laughs> no, God damn it, let's get. What you need to do is just kiss and make up. <laughs> don't, don't be don't be holding on all that anger. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, all right, man. All right, man. All right, so all right. so did you guys ever like? How far did you guys tour? Did you ever go on the road for we any? At least three counties. Yeah, really? we, yeah. We, wow. we we were we we had a bad taste in our mouth. At, at that time, we tried to start venturing out and heading up towards Chicago. We tried yeah. that, and um, we 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 played to a bartender and a and a janitor and our girlfriends uh, and, the, and the opening band <laughs> and the opening band, which enjoyed us very well. Yeah. Well, good. Well, they see, us, see, so that was good. At least they stuck around for us. Yeah, yeah see, they were super good guys, and they were super. And it was one of the best. Too. Best gigs we ever did. So, yeah. where was you guys' uh, favorite place to play? Around here or wherever? Mm. Mm. River Man. Center and iWireless. Yeah. yeah. I gotta say, iWireless at this point. That's, that's, <laughs> well, obviously, that's the top. But, uh, like, uh, like, you guys played at Scream Screamers a lot. Screamers you know, really Pigpen, cool and what was better? Back in the day. We had some good times at Pigpen, but the, the Screamers place was more like. I it mean, was a bigger room. Geez, it and was a, huge. And a, yeah, and all we that. had our biggest crowd at Screamers. I I remember the the door count and stuff. And we yeah. had it for because I I take stock of shit like that. So I was opening for somebody or you guys? No, it was or, us. You guys. Okay, that's yeah. what I mean. I was keeping count of all right. You know, it doesn't matter if we open for somebody and the place is packed. That doesn't matter to me. Okay. What matters to me is when we play. Right. And how many people pay through the door? Mm -hmm. That's how I judged my success at that point. Success, and it never really got anywhere near what I was hoping for at first and, right. and things were starting and that's what started to happen to me I started to doubt myself and you know and that's real easy for a musician to do because when I wish that I had it felt the same as they I wrote it 
Mm-hmm. And I wish I felt like these guys did about it. I wish I didn't write it. I wish Terry wrote it right. so that I could stand up there and play no. it like I mean it every fucking night and not give a shit what people think. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But since I was a dude, every reaction was my fucking fault. You it took was it my personally. voice. It was my voice. It was my chords. It was my hooks. You know, it was all that shit. Right. And if you didn't like the music, it was all on me. Right, he, he and, took it very, very personal. Yeah, like, where he really shouldn't have. Yeah, he shouldn't. But he have. took it very personal. But and that, he, he's right, though. He, he he wrote all the stuff, and it's a it's a like you know when you paint a picture, it's that, like it becomes your baby. All right. Of a sudden, and when you know if not everybody comes up and says, "Oh, it's such a cute baby," mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. it's like, "Oh yeah." Well, then, but but <laughs> let me get kind of bitter about it. But, but let me clarify that though. Be like that. It it was written, but when I wrote it, it's almost like there was co-writers there with me that I hadn't met yet. Sometimes. Mm-hmm. Because I was thinking of, when I wrote the songs, I was thinking of a drummer just like Terry. You know what I mean? Right. You, remember you got the demos for the shit, and you were, and, and I, he came to jam with us to be, when we first got together or whatever. And uh, we can get back to that, or we can skip it, whatever, <laughs> it don't matter to me. But when he came, he, he I, I programmed all the shit on like an SR-16 drum machine. Right. And I didn't, I didn't take the time to really sort out, well... Um, I'm gonna do you know a roll on the snare and on the hi hat and maybe do like double bass at the same time or something and then hit four cymbals at once. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. On the on the SR16 that sounded kick ass. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you know it was just I just didn't take the time to pick. I was like fuck it, it's getting the riff down. And I did down, and I gave him the whole song and he learned the demos like the SR16. Mm-hmm. And I was like octopus man. How did? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, uh, he just kind of, well, as good as he could, you know what I mean? And right. there was some stuff on there that... Yeah, I needed a fifth arm hanging out of my butt sometimes. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff on there that weeded out the, the, the people that weren't capable of... Right. So that. you had some stuff wrote before your drop hammer actually started. Oh, that. he had almost the whole all, record full oh, okay. of stuff. Did okay. I say record? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm old. Yeah. yeah. I had, uh, I had, I think, Walk With The Brave and um, I'm trying to think of the songs that I gave you guys, In Shock. Uh, when I get when I met you, I, I think World I had, Without a Sun on my with, on my little tape, and yeah. also um, an early version of Blame, I think was on yep. there as well. Early stuff was on there, and and some other stuff had been written at the time too. And uh, Tony had written, came and uh, uh, we co-wrote actually um, one of the songs, Friends, and mm-hmm. then um, he wrote himself Gravity, which is a fucking awesome song. Right, and we re- refused to play it because. He quit the band and we were pissed, but people yelled it out all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, like, a, it's a cool song. There, there's some people that that's their favorite record, on, their favorite song on the record, and you know, and that always made me real happy. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> that's but another shot of the junk. Wow. Right, 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 right. And, and he just keeps throwing like blindsided hooks at me. I turn my head and he's doing something cool again, you know. Yeah. But I'm 40 now, and I don't, I don't really feel the same way as I did then. And I'm, you know, who cares? Right. Whatever. So. um Anyway, so we we wrote. He had a couple songs on the record, and then um, basically I had some other songs that ended up on the the three, the second record the Drop okay. Hammer did, and you know Tony and I scuffled about what songs were going to be on the record a little bit, and um, I put his on because I wanted him to be part of it, and we were all putting in money for that one a little right. bit. So, um, and then he quit in the studio because you know the pressure just got. I was around. I wanted perfection from mm-hmm. everybody. I wanted it to be my show. I wanted it to be the, my way. Right. And and uh, he just didn't like the side of me anymore. And that happens. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And and uh, he quit in the middle of the first record. So so who finished it? Finished the record? No, he finished. He well, he, parts, he, right? he he quit. Uh, yeah, he played all the parts. Although he uh, no, he did. He never did the second verse of Blame. I had finished that. Oh, okay. And the vocals on that. So you'll notice the backup vocals on Blame. I bring it down. The first uh, chorus is Tony, and the second one is me. Oh, that's awesome. Because, because there wasn't closer. anybody to. He quit in the middle of doing the backup vocals. Oh wow! Interesting so. trivia right there. Yeah. See, I have to. I have to yeah, I'm not that. Back that too, yeah. <laughs> See, I wasn't there for that. I'm never oh. there for the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, he made me put uh, a. T- Towel over my head when he was doing his vocals because I wanted to be in the room when he was doing the vocals, standing next to him, staring at him. I don't know why he didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then he asked me pleasantly, "Could you at least like put something over your head?" <laughs> wow. And, you know, and some of that might be made up, but <laughs> I don't know. That's the same story I've heard. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that pretty much is what happened. Times I'm thinking that's the true uh, the true folklore right there. But. Anyway, so we go on. We get uh, Jerry Smith, and then um, then then Jeff Styles, 
who was the other lead guitar player in the band, quit. Right. And he, he he moved somewhere with his family. Right. And he started right. a family, and it, it led him to Indiana, and okay. he had to go. Gotcha. And that and that was a really hard time for me because Jeff was just. Then he opened up. He opened up the possibilities even further because he was a better guitar player than me. Yeah. And I could do anything. Mm-hmm. So, you know, all of a sudden, if I wanted to sound like Dream Theater, I could easily because he was really, really good. Yeah. He was better than me in every facet. I was more of a street player. You know, I knew how to street fight, and he was a, a trained MMA artist. <laughs> right, you know what right. I mean? He mm-hmm. knew every genre. I could maybe wrestle a little bit until I could punch you in the jaw. He was a ninja. Right. He was, <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. He, he was cool. And he was a nice good. guy, man. He was, he was super nice. I'm yeah. sure he's still nice. He's Grandpa Jeff now. Yeah, that's Absolutely. Right. I should get closer so I sound cool. Yeah, I actually had to um, s- s- you know, ask him if he could tab out his solos to me. Really? So that I could play them, uh, at least give them some justice uh, when we played. And you tried to pro- replace them a couple times, just didn't work out? It was really tough because, you know, um, we had some really good players play and, and try out for Drop Hammer. It just there's... When when all three of us are in bed with this thing and we're in love with it and we feel like somebody's in that doesn't have the same belief in it, they just kind of maybe are like eh about it. Right. Then it just it, it kills all of us. Mm-hmm. And then there's there's a there's a bad thing going around. It's a bad vibe. Then you know and and we they got to love it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and that's the only way it can work. I don't I want to be in a band that there's somebody in it that would rather be doing something else. Yeah. Yeah. So is there any plans to ever do more recording? Between you guys, have you guys talked about this since the big show? You'll well, have to talk I mean, about just, management. Right yeah, yeah. Well, d- let I me mean, just where you guys sit at with this. Let me just say that um, w- with this whole when when Kenny Ra- asked us to do the Battle of the Bands at Rascals, um, we we I was reluctant. I got them guys as soon as I got these guys on the phone and we started talking about Drop Hammer again. There was a certain um, confidence that still was there. With, with everybody and and when we got in the same room and, and started you know we had to rehearse I mean right yeah. <laughs> please I, I mean <laughs> going into that cold even, would have been horrible <laughs> even yeah even I had having ri- written the songs and recorded them you know once you record a song you know you go through it a thousand times when you're recording it and I and I did demos of that since 96 or before so I know these fucking songs and I should right and I got you would think and I got to rehearsal <laughs> well we got to rehearsal and I and I was going off just complete memory you know what I mean oh. and and I was like oh 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 I can't I remember doing that and uh yeah muscle memory is and, awesome and, <laughs> and Smith did a few things yeah. and Terry was pretty much right on the ball yeah because he practiced so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I cheated I yeah but I saw I, like, I saw Damn, a set of, Terry are you gonna be able to do that anymore I saw a set of drums in his garage yeah. Oh, yeah. that were like still warm from being beat on when I got there <laughs> my neighbors are awesome I can't I can't complain <laughs> so we uh, long story short I guess we that once you rekindle some sort of thing that I've been missing for so long right um, that makes me feel proud and now that there's no pressure on us mm-hmm. you know because back then my, my whole thing I was feeling like everybody else was riding on my success right in a way um, these guys are going to live or die by what happens with drop hammer in that sense you know because mm-hmm. th- this was their one ticket you right. know what I mean and I don't know I don't know if I'm saying something bad but I'm, I, I'm, maybe you had more tickets but I'm, I felt <laughs> like at the time I it was really on me, right. you know, because Terry would call and, and, and reassure me, you, you write good shit, Brian. You, you're a talented guy. Get to writing. That's what you need to do. Keep writing. Keep writing. Mm-hmm. And the material started to change. You know what I mean? And it didn't quite fit the criteria of Drop Hammer anymore right? for me. And, you know, and, uh, you know, so I kind of lost that that touch of, you know, I was trying to write hits. Right. And which is good, yeah. but Drop Hammer wasn't aimed at hits per se you know mm-hmm. what i mean it was more it was there was some hook mixed in with oh definitely showing off how we play or, or <laughs> trying to trying to kill ourselves you know what i mean yeah, right. right so um but at the end of the day uh that was uh that rekindled some sort of excitement with me that you know now that the pressure's off that i don't feel like i have to get a, a multi-million dollar record deal right you know it, it, the idea of that is just out of my head now now it's a, a love of the actual fucking music that drop hammer has right and a love for the guys that are in the fucking band mm-hmm. and going out and shoving it down people's throats like it or not right and, and now that i feel that way it's it's a completely different you know mm-hmm. uh perspective so does that lead you into more writing then now 
Um, I think he needs to. I I'm think so, too. Right? I, I mean, I'm just going to blow the horn if you want to, yeah. but I, I just really <laughs> think that uh, Brian sometimes uh, – Needs a kick in the pants. Right. I know it's hard. He's got talent. Busy in life, but you're right. Running off of him, and he never lets. I mean, everybody thinks, oh, it's Brian Meyer, blah blah. I, I no. don't. I don't. Well, me neither. Because <laughs> well, we're around each other a lot. All I'm saying is, is, he, is he's got songs that never nobody has heard except for me. Right. On a little cassette tape. What do you think about this? And it's like an acoustic thing or whatever. It's like, damn, how how awesome There's, is this guy? Write some more stuff, Brian. People people get tattoos with your sayings and your and your lyrics, and they get necklaces made with your lyrics, and they and and you have touched a lot of people over the years. And that's one thing though too. I think and we should probably touch on a little bit is there needs this whole thing that. with with this battle of the bands and the iWireless and all that. To have as many of the people that used to like Drop Hammer mm -hmm. drop everything. Yep. To come and support the band, right? That that's that spoke. We have pretty, pretty pretty loudly to me at least that mm -hmm. you know what people still dig the stuff, and we still like playing it. It oh, wouldn't yeah. be it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if we played <laughs> some. I think you, you guys should, you guys should be proud of your legacy, and you have a chance to continue it. And I think you guys should. Well, it, I got to know the band. I went to Screamers before I knew any of you guys, and I enjoyed it. And I went because you guys were playing. You know, I'm like that sounds good. It's just fun to watch. I mean, it's like watching Eric Singer, and you know, I mean, it is. It, dude's like Michael Jordan throwing sticks off the ground, catching them, <laughs> bouncing them off the walls and shit. I don't know what the hell's going on, you know. But it's just the whole show was just fun, and the reunion show. You seen the energy back, and even the battle of the bands. <clears throat> it was just like there was something there, and you can tell. It's, it's magic when we to, all three get to together. sit and waste it. And I'm not the only one that thinks that. To sit and waste not playing together, I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, we can't do it awesome. all the time because it's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of you, man. <laughs> we'll do a couple shows a year. Or, you know, I don't know. Like I said, start writing something. I mean, there's a lot of talent sitting right there. And Well, there's, there's talent. we got a great manager guy. If he wants the gig, I think he could just totally manage the band. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I gotta tase you guys once in a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't let this guy shine my pants. But, um, oh, oh but, really? Oh, man. Which, <laughs> and, I don't, I don't even and I'm not, I'm not turning your knob. And I'm not turning your knob either. Oh, I was God. sitting here for like 30 <laughs> seconds with that punchline, <laughs> and I and, and I had to really yeah. fight myself. I'm like, Terry's gonna punch me if I say this, but oh, no. and you know I love you, man. Yeah, I know. I would never. I would never. <laughs> but if the funny's there, you take you it take every it. time. You gotta run with it. Like I say, I'm not. I'm not trying to go on a world tour and get a, a huge record deal and, and make millions and and all that shit. You know what I mean? I'm just looking to go out with like my favorite dudes. Mm -hmm. Um, and play the shit that we love. Right. And in doing that, we're going to maybe attract some, some people that are on the same wavelength and like the shit that we're doing and want to be part of our, our family. Because that's really what it is. When I look out and I see the Drop Hammer fans there, I know them all. <laughs> right. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. No, not we, for person. We, right. we, sure. we know them because Terry's really good at talking to people and um, Jerry's good at talking to people. They're very personable. I had a, I had a hard time talking to people um, when I, when Drop Hammer was playing, and I have a lot of people that remember how I acted. And I, and I just gotta say, um, it wasn't the reason I was standoffish then. Really, was an insecurity. I was afraid of what you were gonna say to me. First right. of all, because um, if you come up to me and, and praise me too much, I'll think that you're crazy. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't praise me at all, I'll think that you're an asshole. Right. So. There's a happy meet. I just wanted people to say, "Hey, Brian, cool. I love your band. Hey, um, you know, how are the skins doing this year? You know, yeah. and it's immediately get off the subject because right. I didn't like talking about it all the time. And that's what people want to do is talk to you about you and your music and your band and this and this, and then it makes me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I guess then why do you get in this game is the next question. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Why did you write songs then? I see. Why did you start a band? Mm -hmm. Because you didn't know about it then. Right. You didn't know that side of it when you were writing <laughs> right. the songs. Right. I wanted people... Well, oh, I mean, people are going to listen to it and like, like it or not? Oh, listen. Swarm me? <laughs> the, oh, my God. The answer is this. The answer is this. The reason why anybody gets in a band... Um, and wants to do that is because you basically want people to like you. Right. Okay. And and I wasn't a real popular kid in school, and I didn't you know didn't get all the girls and shit. Mm -hmm. And and I got in a band because I, I I figured that would be my ticket to elevate myself to where I'd have friends. Right. And my own clique mm -hmm. of friends that stood behind my you know the same views or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and then when it happened. 
I didn't know how to relate to people that way. You know what right, I mean? Right. I wasn't used to somebody coming up to me and saying, you know, you affected me this way or your music does this and I listen to it all the time. I didn't believe them. Right. I, you know, because I really didn't stand behind it enough to where I believed that somebody could love it that much. Mm -hmm. And then the insecurities hit you. And right. then you start going, well, these people are just shining me on. You know, yeah. and you didn't want to believe anybody, and, and then they start showing up with the shit tattooed on their fucking arm. <laughs> yeah, and then you're, yeah. and then, well, and then that actual, happened quite a bit. At least twice. A couple, really. Yeah, well, there's at least two drop hammer tattoos. And when that really? happened, no kidding. And no, when no, that, kidding. and when that happened, <laughs> that's crazy. I remember we were playing. It was right around the time that we were getting spun on 97X with not even, and uh, it was a pseudo. I don't know if you want to say a hit. Now, I'm not going to say it's a hit, but people were requesting it. Right. There was a lot of people having to listen to it, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they like it or not. Right. They were not even. They, they, yeah. they knew the song because they, right. they were listening to it on their way home every day. They had to. So, around that time, we were doing that. And, and I noticed that we were, um, when we were setting up at the pig pen um, one time, you know, because we're, we're just a bunch of buttholes. We got off work that day from right. working our warehouse job or whatever, you know. Jerry would have to change out of his dockers from his office job or whatever. Yeah. And, 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 you know, on the weekends or right. whatever, we were rock stars. You right. know what I mean? And and some of these people didn't know that. Mm -hmm. They thought mm -hmm. that we really just, that's what we did. Right. And um, so we would be rolling in our sweatpants and shit like that, setting up our gear. And uh, and uh, they would let a few people in because they were there early because they wanted to get our, you know, our autographs and shit. Right. And a, a couple of these kids were, had one sleeve rolled up and... Um, I noticed, well, I think my girlfriend at the time noticed it first. She said, Brian, there's a couple guys out there that um, have drop hammer tattooed on their arms. Really? And I said, stop it. They have drew it on or something, you know, It's and they, they want your autograph stuff. So we went out there and we talked to them. We were in sweatpants and, you know, Terry's got his hair pulled in his hat, and, you know, <laughs> and, and it just was, it was something that I didn't understand. I didn't, I didn't expect it to affect anybody that way. Even though when you wanted it, you didn't expect it. Yeah, I guess I'm saying yeah. that I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna give it my. It's like fighting uh, Brock Lesnar. You know what I mean? Right. It's like I'm gonna swing as hard as I can, but he's gonna whoop my ass. Right. And you didn't expect to get a lucky shot in and drop him to a knee. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And, <laughs> and and I, you know, there I stand, where I wanted to be, which was um, uh, uh, writing music that affected other people. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I didn't know how to take that. Right. I don't want to stay away from it. I didn't. I didn't want to interact with. That. I didn't want to. I guess I'm saying I didn't want to stay out or outstay my welcome with them. And because I, I was figuring, it, the longer I talk to these people, the more they're going to realize that I'm just a normal schlub. Right. You know what I mean. And I wanted to st keep that. Mystique. Right. I wanted to when they saw me to be like that's that's Brian Miner. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Instead of oh yeah, I talked to him. He's a jag off. You know what I mean. Right. Right. So <laughs> you know, and that's part of it. Yeah. So and, and when people approached me, then I was usually pretty quick with them, and I wanted to. Move on. So. Right. Uh, so let's go around the horn here real quickly. What's your favorite song to play of your own? Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and right. right. yeah. so yeah. we, we, give we, you guys a chance. We, we know our least favorites. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> and, and they're not because the song sucks. Right. It's because they're hard. They're, they're, hard. they're, they're too difficult. Right, let's throw one of those out. Which, which one? Uh, is this too hard to play? Terry yeah. never wants to play Guess Again. There's, there's yes, a lot of yeah, it would be impossible at this age. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, if I practice, you'd have to warn me. No, no you're you getting warned. Yes. You're Terry fucking Hodges, man. Yeah. yeah. See, that's one of the songs I love to play, but I know it's the hardest to play. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, I love playing it, but it's, it's so hard, hard for man. Sure. It's so hard. When you look over it in between songs, and Terry's trying to stretch his quad, you know, he's yeah. like, yeah. stretching, and Jerry's shaking his hand out like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bend, yeah. Bending his fingers back yeah. like this, it's, and we're all gasping for air and guzzling water off our yeah. amps you know what I mean yeah. and we only playing one song yeah. you know what I mean <laughs> if if we were going to do this for real we would have to definitely go see somebody about yeah. getting into some shape yeah <laughs> we, we would have to lose a few pounds yeah, on the, the rider you'd have oxygen tanks yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> But well, not, I'm people not. People think it's headsets. Well, let's stick it in your nose. You know, like when you're in the hospital. <laughs> no, that, well, instead of them talk boxes, we'll have a straw come up right into yeah. right into my nose. Yeah, cool. Like, okay, that's cool, right. man. Yeah, va there's vapor coming out of that. You like vaporizing some pot yeah. or something? Yeah. Like, no, that's oxygen, so I can yeah. like stay conscious. <laughs> <laughs> my heart I, think, man. I gotta have it. Uh, but and I'm not and not to say that I think that I, you know we wrote we had material that sounded like dream theater or super progressive hard stuff to play. But for us, 
it was difficult. You know what I mean? We, right. I think it's because we played it. Well, it wasn't that hard to do, really. It's just we played it with a lot of aggression. And right. when you, you know, if you're just standing, if we just stood there and played it or sat in chairs, we could do it all day long. Probably not break a sweat. Probably. We might, we might well, sprain a finger. But, right. It's something. But uh, you know. It was mostly because we were still trying to run around the stage and look cool, and, right, yeah. and he's flinging sticks and banging his head the whole time and throwing up. And yeah, then, right. We're gonna know. get into that. We're gonna get into that. We're talk about <laughs> yeah, that. just hold on. Here. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, I'm telling you, this is the two part. Yeah. So, it's a long talk. Uh, so, what's your favorite song to play? I mean, what gets you just like this is it? Um, get you, you know, going. There's only one thing that stands out for me through this whole thing, and and it was um, one time it was at the pig pen, mm -hmm. and and we were playing World Without a Sun, and it's not my favorite song per se, but it's my favorite experience, and and it was because there's a part in there was just me and the guitar in a crowd, right? And 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 I've read enough Kiss interviews that you know I've seen Paul talk about how well I wrote that on my sofa in uh, Manhattan, and now I've got these people in Australia singing it back to me, you know right. that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Well, that my little dose of that mm -hmm. was um, when I was on stage with Big Ben and you know filling the blanks. I'm I'm singing World Without a Sun, just me and the crowd. And I I even think I went to my knees and pulled the microphone down, living out my dream. You know right. what I mean? I had a, a, a good house of people, and every single fucking one of them were singing the words to that song. Right. And I stopped singing and I closed my eyes and moved the mic away from me and kept playing the music. And we made one hell of a good band, me and that 150 people that were right. there, whatever it was. Got the goosebumps. And oh, I literally cool. remember saying, this might be the only time that you get to feel this. Right. Because everybody was in tune that night. You know what I mean? And I'm not talking about their voice. Yeah. I'm talking about just, it, it was drop hammers time right then. Right. And, and, and I celebrated it, and I, I was smart enough at least to take that moment in. And that's what I remember the most. So World Without a Sun really is... You know, when I when we start that song, part of me is like, well, I know that there's at least four or five guys that are gonna go, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> right. <laughs> but but I, I, I really don't think so. But I don't but, think so either. Yeah. Uh, when you're so. there, yeah. Cause I, cause, you cause can look around. I'm in the band, but I'm a fan. See, right. That, that helps too. Yeah. I'm, I'm a fan of Brian's creativity. Right. So I didn't have a damn thing to do was writing World Without a Sun, mm -hmm. but I get to hit like I'm back there hitting drums and I'm doing this. And watching the people sing it back, mm -hmm. I mean, I get to soak that in too, just like. Oh yeah. But it's it was his song, man. But I I'm just lucky to feel that, and he is he's not even saying how good it really is right. to have a whole crowd full of people singing. I consider it my song. Well, you yeah, consider yeah, it your I mean, song. The, 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 it's, it's our song. Yeah, the, the, I mean, just, I love this stuff. Right. And, and, and if money hands out, know, it's your money. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, when you're right, on stage, right. it's our song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and when those people are singing it back to you, it's, it's something real. else. Yeah. It's, pretty it's, your, it's your song, Terry, when the way that we do it now, you do the da blickum, da blickum, da blum, blum. You know, that's then it's your song still. You know what I mean? Because that that's not how I wrote it. And the way that we... <laughs> oh, here, we here we go. No, that's, yeah. not, no. that's not what I'm trying to say. <laughs> no, no, no. Do you, yeah. do you, we've all changed the song so many times. The, right. the songs came in in one shape and came out in a, in a, in a new shape that was even better. Uh, right. It's not always bad. So what's your favorite song that gets you kind of going? And I love playing Walk with the Brave. I, honestly, I love that song. I've always liked that song, and it's fun to play. I like, I like, uh, the beef. I like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, 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 I do, I, there's, there's no song I dislike playing. Mm -hmm. There's just songs that I can play better because of the physicality of them. Like, right. Yes, again, I like the song, but. Man, yeah. Seriously, I'd have to have some practice. On that. Right. But, um, I just gotta say, Terry wrote every single boom that oh, me and yeah. that me and Jerry ever do in the really? set. Because yeah. sometimes he'll be like, "That's a good place for like if you guys were <laughs> like this," and that's a, that's a drummer talk. He's yeah. like, I'm, and he'll I don't know what it's called. He'll like he'll, <laughs> there's a part where we actually have to remember. Okay, Terry's gonna stop here because we're supposed to go, both go. Oh, yeah, boom. and if you, if you guys don't do it, we're right. gonna suck. Cause I'm back there going <laughs> and, and Terry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When I call the big room, I'm like conducting the orchestra at that point. I'm like, I know. You, it's like, like that face. It's like yeah. you're calling an audible there. Yeah, right. I so, know. If they favorite, don't do it, it's bad. What's your favorite song, Jerry? Uh, I'm gonna go with Believe. Just, I mean, it's not. It was really weird because the, the, there's no way to record that song to make it sound like it does when we play it live. Right. There's just not. And when we play that song live, I mean, we're all just it's a, uh, you know what I mean? And that's, and that's what I loved about this band from day one is 
I don't know how to say it other than the music just it stops and it's just, right. You know, yes. and, 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 and they play with a lot of motion, right? You know, and that's you know, and you know that's what that's what gets well, me off. On it. Well, now we play with a lot of motion. We'd have to go on like a, a regimen of water and bread or something for like six weeks. And you no, know, what ha- what happens is if it, what we need to do is lock ourselves in the basement like we used to or whatever and and sweat it out. That's what yeah. you know. You play you play these sets. You know over enough over times. We'll, we'll lose some weight. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Open up, There's open no up, diet plan for that. People. Lock in the basement. And open up the door. Throw down a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah. And no peanut butter. Uh, no peanut wait, butter. Yeah. that's all. Yeah, yeah. It's just jelly. Just jelly. No, he's uh, he's off the peanut butter. All right. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm never gonna quit he's, peanut he's butter. Eating, what's <laughs> it called? That brown. Crap? That, the deal's off, man. What's the brown <laughs> shit? The Nutella. Nutella. Nutella? Fuck yeah. that shit. I want Jif. <laughs> <want Jif. laughs> All right, Terry. Uh oh. Let's talk oh, about this infamous. Man. All right. <laughs> throwing up on stage story. Throwing up on stage. Yes. How many oh, times? Just once that I know of. <laughs> no, I understand. It wasn't really a throw up. It was more of a hairball like. I seen. Did you see the footage? Yes. I've never seen No, it. I was there. Oh, that's right. You were. You I were in the front row. Right. Yeah. You were next I to had kid. footage of it. Yes. I you you were the do. kid like next to that kid with the dreadlocks. Yeah. Because we were. God, he remembers this shit. I only don't remember that one time at WD. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, a lot of it's a blur because when you play enough, it's like a jukebox and you just are playing. But, but I remember things and I remember that because right. we were opening for Jackal. Yep. And um, I don't remember who was with me. I had a friend of mine probably with me. We drove up from Monmouth and stuff, and uh, I think I went to the Golden Arches. So I don't get in trouble for saying the real name, it, and they didn't make me sick. It wasn't them. Right. It was, okay. It, no, honest. That was, right. That's a whole different story. <laughs> that's a that's a <laughs> different story. Same, yeah. same, outfit, same outfit, different different topic. Right. Uh, but uh, so I'm playing, and we're right at the front of the stage at the pig pen over for Jackal because you know the drummer always has to take up yeah because they do it on purpose. I don't know. So Whoa. I'm playing, and Robbie wanted us to play cover songs. Well, we played our whole set of drop hammer songs, and we were like, "Thank you, good night," and we thought we kicked ass. And you know, and he comes to the side of the stage, and there, here's Robbie. Hey, you guys got a player? I can't do his voice. I can't do his voice. <laughs> Anybody can do his voice. I don't think so. You, hey, Robbie, he's, he's like, "Hey, you guys got to play." <laughs> he sings pretty good, but I don't know. He didn't yeah. talk good. Um, he's kind of got that a little bit of like Kermit Meeks, uh, the uh, the dude that sings. What would you do? Joe Cocker, yeah, Joe Cocker, Joe, Joe Cocker, and Kermit the Frog mixed yeah. together. <laughs> so, oh, okay. he's Jerry, never coming. Yeah. Here. No. Coming on the show he's now, never on the show. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about his talking voice. <laughs> no, he's a he's a good. Singer. He knows that he's got a talking voice that's unique. You know what I mean? Shit. Well, yeah. I mean, come on. That's the way I'm saying it, Brian. You, you guys want to talk? I'm I'm a, I'm really gray. I die this shit. You know what I mean? So we're all adults, right? right I mean, yeah. are you gonna hide behind the fact that he's got one of them unique voices? No. no. I mean, fuck. I mean, come on. Yeah. If you can't take that, then yeah. <laughs> well, I'm never talking to Brian Minor again because he said something that was true. You know what I mean? That's the, that's the stuff that usually gets you in the worst trouble. Yeah. Yeah, but he's grown up too. I mean, fuck, you know. Yeah. So anyway, um, what so, were we saying? So you had to play a cover song. <laughs> so he comes I up. Think it was, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He I'm comes sorry. up and says, you, "You got 20 more minutes." Anyway, and we're like, "All right, what do we do now?" Uh, I think I, I was singing and playing a like a poison. It song. was looking with the cat drug in. Look with the cat drug in. There you go. And that was back in the day before I wore headbands. Mm-hmm. If you ever see me now, I have a damn headband on, and this is the reason why. <laughs> it's because I'm playing and I'm singing. And I don't know. I inhaled a big wad of my bangs yeah. at that point, right in the middle of the verse. Yeah, <laughs> this is true, right? Yes. And and I'm playing. I'm probably spinning a stick, and I'm like, you know, uh, I don't even know the words. I'm just saying. I remember and pulling it out, and yeah. when I yanked them out because they were like down to here, I totally inhaled them because yeah. I was sucking air back there. Okay, reflex. And yeah. I went, yeah. Wah! We, and oh this, yeah, and this little hunk of French fries. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was. It, it looked like one of those no bake cookies. Yeah. <laughs> That's gross. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, right on Jackal's drum riser, I, yeah. I yacked up. Looked. It looked like a little hairball, like a cat would break right. up. And and supposedly I didn't miss a beat no, or even a lyric. You didn't. Or, did not, you, dude. you did and, not. And I remember. I, I love you, but I, I don't remember you standing there. I just yeah. remember that kid with the dreadlocks because right, you, well, you didn't yeah. have dreadlocks. No, I did not. Well, those stick out, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm looking straight down by my snare drum because I'm right on the edge of the stage, and that kid goes, Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> he saw the whole thing, and I'm like, Oh, my God, this is, I'm never going to live that. <laughs> but at least I didn't screw up. So right? every time you run, no, you didn't. And every time you run to that guy, that's what he remembers you by. 
Or do you see him? I don't. I don't have no idea who that oh, kid was. Right. He he's was just some kid in the front row. With the he's like, but he dug it. He was like, "That's yeah. rock and roll." These guys, yeah. <laughs> these guys puke on stage. This is I, legit. I actually, <laughs> I, actually uh, I think I grabbed a towel or like a paper towel and I I did clean it, it up, up. But it was like, yeah. I'm all trying to be a big rock star. I got like McNuggets. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not secret sauce. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no sauce. Yeah. So and then the, another experience with uh, you want to talk about the uh, the Big Mac experience? Oh, well, because we're going to get sued by the Golden Arches. That's right. They're not going to sue my <laughs> shitty little show. If, if I get popular saying, enough on this show to get sued by McDonald's, I've done something I'm, right. Okay, okay, well, I'll make this quick because we'll run out of time. Um, All right. I'll make this quick. We're opening for the tribute band Strutter, the Kiss tribute band. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I do it one time? No, it's, it's locked Just off because it. it's loud. Oh, okay. oh. God bless him. There. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, no, you can. It's a live oh, grenade. It's loud. It's loud. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> All right, okay. We're opening for the Kiss tribute band Strutter. They're they're pretty famous. Uh, Screamers was pretty packed. Right. It was back in the '97 X days when mm. uh, Dave and Darren and that girl uh, Dana, Dana and mm. Dave or Dana, and I don't remember. Anyways. Um, yeah, don't eat two for two dollar Big Macs and go. Play a rock show. No I'm good. Just, I'm just saying. No good. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Let's just say that we usually I mean, I we did. usually play really fast. But yeah. our, oh no, our, we, we were booking. We, we, <laughs> the, I'm like, man, I'm never gonna make it to the end of this show. <laughs> and, and, and I'm like tooting a little bit. <laughs> I, I, I did not poop. I swear. <laughs> And he's back there with his knees together doing double bass. Like, you know. And he's looking at me, he's going, oh. hurry the fuck up. Can we? And, he, oh. and it was, it was like, two songs short. I really? bailed. Yeah, I yeah. bailed over the top of the drums. He went over the top of the drums, and, and, through the front and liners, and through the crowd. Darren, that's on the, the yeah. radio yeah. nowadays. Yeah. What channel is that? Um, I live 1049. Right. I, sh- I didn't mean to, and I hope he doesn't mad or whatever but I shoved him out of the way and I was like just like Dumb and Dumber <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. and my friend Adam had to stand there in the door because there's no door it's like a, you know you're in the Marines yeah and, and I'm I, I'm pretty not bashful but I'm bashful about things right and that's one of them is pooping your brains out and, uh, <laughs> and I'm like in her just ruining their bathroom <laughs> I thought I was gonna die in, in his shiny pants yeah in his shiny oh, yeah. pants yeah. I got my little plug their rock star dumber pants on and they're down at my ankles I'm like oh god <laughs> that's a true story and, and, and I'm not proud but yeah we cut the set too so yeah. short and I had a drum rack back then it was real sturdy I still yeah. got it but yeah, right. it went, shoo, shoo, and then we just saw Terry go Whoop. yep oh that's all it's a blonde throw <laughs> <laughs> heading towards the back of the room like oh, holy shit yeah. hell it was 50 yards to get to the bathroom yeah that was a long ways like, yeah the stage yeah he's like man he's gonna sign some autographs yeah. back there or something it's a good thing there wasn't no steps they had that wheelchair ramp Ramp, yeah. and I was oh. up that ramp because if it had been steps, I'd have pooped him. <laughs> there's, there's no way. It was it was close. Uh, I, I did make it, I swear, but it was it was it was it was close. <laughs> yeah, we were almost uh, the notorious band that uh, the, shit their pants yeah. at the <laughs> screamers. Well, well, I almost turned into the Spinal Tab, the Green Globby. <laughs> it it pro- blew we, up because because man, at my, I thought I felt like. It was like, I had to toot, you know. Yeah. My, I was, there was gas was and, it, huh? and fire. And All right. Like, so we, we almost enough, we almost had to be in a band that had to throw up and, pu- and shit their pants every night. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> pu- That, that could have been the key, yeah, man. Yeah. Same guy. We'd have been famous. Like, see, you got to see this fucking band, man. See, the, the, if, you there, do, if there's another album, it smells like number two now. Kind of makes sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> see? You know what, though? It's coming together, isn't it? We didn't say we're going to name it Smells Like Number Two. No, I'm, I'm helping out here. <laughs> that sounds like no, a weird album. I'm helping it. <laughs> You're supposed to help me encourage him to write songs. I would love for Brian to write some songs. Actually, I would like to... I know that people will roll their eyes, but I would like to take... We would have to have a little meeting or something or whatever, but I would like to take our favorite songs that, right. that kind of got not recorded the way that they probably should have and it's and it's not because of it, Bill or whatever it's, it's the times we were poor and, kids right and when we went to record that stuff we didn't have like a bazillion dollar budget oh, right. we couldn't go in and just fix every little thing I had like <laughs> I, seriously right. people were like oh well, damn Terry I can hear you drop the beat there towards the tail end or whatever song I had two takes on every song that was it right. and I had to play the whole song the whole way through right. there was no like 
screwing up three quarters of the way through. I had to I had to go with it. Mm-hmm. And I did my bestest. And right. but I would like to go back and take a few of the songs that I think are just awesome mm-hmm. and spend a little time on them. And, right. and, and make them sound like nowadays. And like I think it's a great idea. Really you know, okay. we were we didn't go into it <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, we right. didn't go into it to make a record. I wasn't in that frame of mind. I didn't look at it as we were making an album or a record. Right. I wanted a promotional piece that I could show uh, more people uh, what we were doing. Mm-hmm. And it really was like a demo that we ended up doing, but we released it and, and people t- took it like it was our record. But you're talking about Bring It Down now. Yeah. Okay. We didn't have the money to really do a record or an album, you know what I mean? Right. It was just like, let's see how quick we can get eight songs recorded. Right. <laughs> it was like well, a yeah. marathon. <laughs> And, well, it, and the only reason it was eight songs is because that's all we could afford, you know? Right, right. So. Do you guys write it all? I mean, I, I'm going to come up with a, a, a line or uh, two here and there. But I hear uh, tons uh, of stuff in my head, but I got no talent, so I don't know. Jerry? <laughs> as, as far as a whole song, no. I'm, I'm, my, my comfort spot in that is listening to bits and pieces and maybe coming up with transitions or maybe changing something a little bit. We, honestly, start to it's beginning. really awesome or because start to end. Brian can hear all the stuff in his head. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and when he, he kind of gives us some freedom to... He, you know, to add a little bit. And well, really, I don't. I think it, it's never been a problem. No, there hasn't. Honestly, I be honest with you. I don't. I don't know if it uh, sonically came through because that record. Let's be honest. The three sucked, production wise. It, it a lot it of have some issues. Okay. And it wasn't. I'm not blaming Bill or anybody. I'm blaming everybody that was in the situation at the time. We were trying to emulate what was happening in music, and that was right. this really. Pantera, Megadeth, and all these bands had switched over to this really air-moving sub kick hit. You know what I mean? That yeah. was that had a snap like Dream Theater and yes. all these bands that had these really processed kicks. There was no thud in them really as much as there was a oomph. Mm-hmm. And we were trying to do that, and we all put our hands in the cookie jar and tried to get that done. And and what came out wasn't exactly, you know, what it wasn't. No, it didn't turn out. Well, right. we were hoping, unfortunately. <laughs> <clears throat> so. uh do you guys ever have a show that just the I'm equipment? S- I'm, I'm sorry. I, I wanted to say something. I was thinking. I don't want to lose my train of thought. <laughs> Blow it, man. Do it. No, no, no. Hold no, on. No, just I just want to say, Terry. Terry said something about well, he he he's not talented or anything like as far as writing songs. And and Jerry's like, well, he writes some stuff, but not with me. But I believe that anybody walking around on the street that can uh, respect and appreciate a, a beautiful melody or or a hook in a song mm-hmm. has the capability of writing music. They just don't have the tools or the the means to get it done. Sometimes, sometimes people don't know how to play instruments that you know, and then start doing it that way. But I think that if you can appreciate and hear a melody and and, and have a song give you chills, right. you have it in you. Mm-hmm. It's just you don't have a place to put it to make it. So that being said, there's talent there. It's just he plays the drums. He, you're not going to come in like here's my song and it's you know, it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, that's I can tell Brian if it's good or if it's bad. Th- that's what and counts. he and he does all the time. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> there's certain things he does. I was like, damn, and I get super excited. I'm like, D- give him a high five and get him big right. hug. And there's certain things in it, I'll just give him the look, like, yeah. and he's like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and then we break. But, and then we, but, I, but I, I'm totally honest with him because it's I I I take it super personal. Right. What what he writes because, well, because we, we have yeah to, you we gotta have play, to play it. it. Yeah. If we don't, if we don't, we don't feel it. We're not gonna play it the way I, he but, wants but it. But there's sometimes where I know that. It's there's something better in there, right? If he would just and that hurts to hear, but you know any successful band has got to be able to take that, and, right? And I and I probably wasn't at the time. Right now, I would be a little bit less hurt and mm-hmm. and and taking it take it so personally. I never but. meant to hurt his feelings, never. But, but but I wasn't scared to say you know Brian. Do we need- <laughs> <laughs> I still ain't scared to yeah. tell that, but, but it's not because but of the- any bad things. It's because I wanted to be the best that he can right. do. And, but you and wanted, wanted the honesty. You know what I'm saying? He, well, you, he, he, he helped push it. He liked me right. for the same thing. Right. Well, I, we talked about this on an episode. You know how when you put in your, your CD and you have strangers in the room and you, and you wrote the stuff and you're mm-hmm. getting a really valid, true, honest opinion by people that don't know it's you on the, you know, say, right. for example, you put it in, they don't know what it is, they don't mm-hmm. know it's you, and you're hearing their banter about what they think of it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I mean? That, that can be very... Mm-hmm. That's scary. And when you write something and you give it to somebody, if they're just going to agree with everything that you do and say, "Yeah, it's great, Brian. It's great, Brian," you're you're letting all the shit through, right? And 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 it needs to be filtered. Otherwise, you just got a bunch of people around you that are just going to agree with everything you do because they don't want to hurt your feelings. Mm-hmm. And and in this business, you know, that's you, not good. You, you've got yeah, you've got to put <laughs> no, your no. got to learn how to put your feelings aside. 
you guys ever have a show that just the equipment wasn't working and you guys <laughs> which time <laughs> I mean which what, okay Dude, I mean, there are so many times where like you guys were heading to Burlington, right? And the truck broke down somewhere. Caught on like, fire. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> caught on fire. well oh no, gosh. it caught on fire after the gig when we were trying to pull oh, it out of there. That's right. And what it was oh, was God, we rented. Was right. Wasn't it? I we rented. That now. Oh we gosh. rent. We were renting a PA system from uh, one Robbie Barr that owned a, <laughs> that, guy. Uh, that guy, and he owned the pig pen. <laughs> yeah. And listen, I, I want to clarify something. You know, I don't have anything against Robbie Barr. He, t- he really did hook us I, up a lot. Yeah. He, he. If it wasn't for Robbie Barr, Drop Hammer wouldn't have been put in a lot of positions no. that we were put in. And, and when I say things, this is all out of fun. And, uh, right, right. you know, me and Robbie we're aren't going to. We're, 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 we're yeah, not going to go have coffee ribbon. tomorrow or anything like that. But, you know, he's a different person than me. He he doesn't have time. I always figured that he didn't really have time for me. Right. Personally. I mean, he you could tell he doesn't really care to. You know, to talk to me, so, right? And that's good because he's a little older than I am, and I'm a, I'm a little I was a little twerp that thought I was a shit. You know what I mean? And 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 shit goes on. Anyway, right. we were renting a PA from Robbie Bar, and uh, and we we would go. What we do is we'd go pick up this big fucking truck from Clinton. And talk right. about loyalty, man, to a band. We're playing somewhere for you know three hundred and fifty bucks in like Rock Falls. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and I had to drive and go get this big truck in Clinton, and then drive that truck all the way to Rock Falls. <clears throat> unload it, set the whole PA, you know what I mean? All this shit. Mm-hmm. And when we got to the gig, there was the PA was in the truck, but none of the connectors were. Like, none the of the... snake wasn't there. The snake no wasn't wire. there. There was nothing to hook the speakers up. <laughs> and bad. thank God I have, like, two geeks in the band, which was just Styles and, and, and Jerry. <clears throat> they they somehow... <laughs> we jury rigged that sucker up. <laughs> they, turned, they turned the monitors into PA speakers somehow, and we got through the night. Yeah, that's all we had, like, cable for. It was a nightmare, because I just looked at it like... What do we do now? And then already, you know, Jeff oh. Styles had already had a Swiss Army knife out, and he's <laughs> cutting. Like, yeah. Oh it, yeah. He was like, "This is going on, man." Oh, and nice. uh, between him and Jerry, we got it done. We, st- we it didn't sound very good, but it was, <laughs> I, I, I would have been no help at that point. I'm not good with wire. It's like band Survivor, you know. It's like <laughs> it's like that. yeah. It's like okay. All right, here's your situation. You get one monitor, one amp. And a cord. Make it happen. Oh, you know what I mean? or, or how about this? You're opening for a, a pretty good rock band, and they're like, okay, well, all three of you guys sing. After that, you got two channels. What are you going to use them on? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. When we get when we get to set up at the show, and they... Kick, the, kick the, drum, and a they put us on. They put, and that was... That was... Uh, that was... Um, that was... Uh, Brett Michaels. Was it him or Firehouse? Yeah, it was Brett Michaels. No, Firehouse treated us yeah, really they, good. They were pretty good guys. But it was Brett Michaels, and by the time he got through all of his, you know, he had a mic for his wig, and he had a mic for, like... Well, they had a lot of, wow. he had a lot of players. The, yeah. yeah. And the drummer, drummer, remember, I know remember the, the drummer, the drummer... <laughs> Honesty. Had, open for that guy again. The, edit that part out, Paul. <laughs> the, <laughs> they had, uh, they had, um, they had a mic on, like, uh, a cowbell or something that they didn't really need. Oh, yeah. And, you know, like, two mics on it, so it's a stereo cowbell. Bell or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. And we get up there and they go, okay, uh, how many inputs you guys need? Well, it doesn't matter because you get like three. And mm-hmm. so we had to choose, well, what do you mic then? Um, we're going to mic, uh, I'll turn my guitar as loud as fuck because I can. Jerry, we'll, we'll like get the vocals mixed in ours somehow and then uh, share a channel or something, split it, and then we kick and snare. That's it. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Weird. I think we got four channels. Yeah, because I was the thinking, two. Yeah, I think we got two vocals, and then I just turned the, my amp up. Yeah, I think it was just like kick and three vocals or something. It yeah, was, it was. See, crazy. that's an episode of Band Survivor right there. See, there you go. We did it. You know, and we were still louder than hell. Was, yeah. <laughs> that's why. That's why we're always we were always prepared. Coming back to the iWireless, we were always prepared for the worst. For the worst. I, I talked that. to I talked to Terry on the phone when he said, "Yo, what if we win this thing?" You know, and we played the iWireless. You think it'll? What do you think it'll be like? And I said, "Expect to show up." And, 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 and be treated like shit. <clears throat> right. And to have the lights on the whole time that we play. Mm-hmm. No dressing room. Um, they might even ask us to leave after we play. Right. And anything else that doesn't happen like that will be bonus. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, and and thank Scott Mullen at the iWireless because he really made that shit happen. He, he made sure that we were taken care of. Um, we had full access everywhere. We were treated like... Um, uh, talent, except for maybe by their tour management, yeah, and he went to bat for us. <laughs> Absolutely, their well, we management. almost played a minute longer than we should have. Yeah, a whole minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Lita Ford didn't get any of her songs taken away by the yeah. way. So, so no, yeah. it all she worked was out. Super and, nice. And had Scott Mullen not pulled the trigger, the lights would have been on the whole time. Yep. And the um and and you know we would have well only... he held the doors too for yeah. it was doors were supposed to be at like what five o'clock. 
Yeah. And he waited till like maybe like twenty after five before he even opened the doors because because we weren't done sound checking. Right. And, yeah. And, I mean, there's just not enough nice things to say right. about him and the whole. Mm -hmm. Everybody that works there, no. from yeah. the roadies that are there for every show, like the light guys and stuff that were up in the rafters, those guys were real nice to us. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. I mean, it's I, we're not trying to kiss his butt or whatever. But I'm just saying, there's, really, just, really, there's just no, not enough nice, honest, right. heartful things well, to say about the yeah, guy. Because that really made the experience the experience. Yeah, because, right. I mean, we could have gone in and we got treated like crap, and then we could have played on the stage, and then we could have got booted out. Poof. Right. And yeah. we'd be like, well, we played on the stage. <laughs> yeah. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. But because, you know, the, the whole thing just was so radically different than what we were expecting. It was it was, made it so much worse. It was, it was awesome. Played. It was like the best day at Rock right. and Roll. Right. 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 Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. Right. Well, you know, you were the welcoming committee for everybody. I mean, they let you do that. They didn't even hassle you. You're like, oh, can you sign this? Can you sign this? Oh, hey, oh, yeah. you, hey and, take my picture they, three yeah, times. Terry's, Terry's a fan. He, yeah. he he knows, you know. And that's cool. I'm just giving him shit. I have but a it's, sweet wall of fame in my house. So. Yeah. It's like I can start charging people. It is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I was I, like, I, 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 we've, we've hooked up with a lot of good bands over the year that were pretty decent to us. What's your favorite honest. then? What's, what's your favorite that you've played with? Uh, that actually, you know, we... I don't know. This this last time at the wireless was pretty nice. Cause well, there's a difference there. The, 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 well, there's... yeah. As far as actual bands, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. We'll go that route. I mean, the, I think probably Firehouse was probably the, the, the as far as like wow that we actually got, got to really just hang out with. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's two. what I mean. And that was, that was <laughs> the second time because the first time he ate all their pizza. I didn't know. No. What? See, see, I knew it was going there as soon as you said Firehouse. I said this is going on. This Me is and Brian were both in trouble. <laughs> Listen, we we, we got. I'm to sensing the, a theme, guys. We got to the gig to open up for Firehouse, and we start setting up, and we start asking this for is little. The, this is the pig pen. Pig pen, and yeah. we start asking for things, you know, because you gotta. At least ask. You know they're gonna. If they's like, you know, like, you know okay, I just yeah. ask. It's well, fine. Yeah. Yeah. If I can't stand on the stage and I have to stand outside, that's fine. Whatever, you know, or whatever they're gonna make you do. Right. I don't get any mics. That's fine. Okay, fine. I just wanted to ask. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, We've been there before. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Um, so we get there and, and everything that I'm asking them, they keep saying, yeah, sure, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, can we, can we use our pyro? And they're like. Shit, yeah, you got pyro, bring it in here. Yeah. And we're like, no shit. <laughs> and what when I say pyro, I mean pipe bombs that I made in my garage. <laughs> we that, just set them off in the basement. Yeah. We practiced with them. Nice. Made, my yeah. ceilings are like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a seven foot ceiling, maybe. Yeah, right, right. It's amazing maybe. we're still alive. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We, we put it all into it. Man. But anyway, homemade uh, pipe bombs that I had made because, you know, I was a big dreamer. Anyway, yeah. so we, they let us they let us bring in this. All of a sudden, we're bringing in these like boards with pipes sticking out of them that are you know full of gunpowder, full of gunpowder, <laughs> tape over the top of them, electrical electrical outlet, you know yeah. cords going down in it. We're like, oh, that's our pyro. Sounds, and they're like, sounds safe. Good luck. Yeah. And, and a guy and a guy who's a firebug running them too. Yeah, yeah that doesn't help. Let her rip. Yeah, oh, we almost killed ourselves once. So how'd you get the pizza? But, um, oh, anyway, oh, so we, yeah. we play the gig, and we're we're hungry. We don't – the pig pen didn't have a dressing room. They had a dressing closet. Oh, okay. And if we were opening for Firehouse, that meant we didn't get a dressing room. Right. And we were just so used to kind of going into the back room, and they weren't using it at the time. At the time, they were on their bus or something, so they okay. weren't even using it. Right. And so we end up – we just went in there like, what is this place? You know what I mean? And we know, and there's a stack of <laughs> – there's a stack of pizzas, yeah. beer, chips. You know, Robbie set them up. You know what I mean? So right. I, you know, and we're like, they didn't have to do that for us, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like, you know, and so <laughs> damn, he really went all out this <laughs> time, didn't he? <laughs> so we're in there and we see these pizzas, and you know, we're like, fuck it, we're hungry. So Terry, you know, he grabs. I'm not uh, shy. I he gra <laughs> Terry, you know, you, know how you grab a sliced pizza with one hand like this. Yeah. He put his arm under. <laughs> Yes, you did. You took half, you, you, had, half a pizza. you had half a pizza in your arm, laying I was on your going arm. For, taking it for the go because I knew this can't be. I'm dreaming. I better get this shit out of here. Yeah. Because somebody's gonna come here. What the hell? So he's scooping up pizza, and I'm shoving chips in my mouth like crazy, and grabbing waters and beers and shit. Oh, and, yeah. and, uh, we're like squirrels. <laughs> and so you know, uh, and and by that time, you know, Where Terry. You wait a minute. I want to shoot the horn. Where the hell are you? I was not in the room. Were you outside in Hooters or what? <laughs> what did you I was not in the room. You, I know you weren't in the room. I'm just saying, where were you at? When I don't know. Were I, he was, wa he was watching the door. 
<laughs> he was watching the door. Like, uh, he was watching CJ Snare walk in. That's what he was doing. Right, right, right this way, Mr. Snare. So, so what happens oh, is man. Terry's got this half a pizza uh, straddled on his arm. <laughs> I look like a waiter. Uh, yeah. And uh, he goes to open the dressing room door to come out, and CJ Snare, the singer for the Firehouse, singer is for coming Firehouse. is coming in, yeah. and they whoop, and, and enough to where the pizza was almost on CJ Snare, oh. and he goes. What the fuck are you guys doing in here? And Terry goes, You want a piece? <laughs> <laughs> and then Jets by him. And then I'm like, And then I just kind of follow his lead and sneak out of there. It's like, You guys are eating my fucking pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but the bad, like I said, the bad thing about that is, is we played with them, what, three or four years later? Mm-hmm. Yeah, down at you guys <laughs> bastards don't <laughs> they, were, they were so totally wow. cool. Oh, they were That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. They're super nice guys. For yeah. And they for sounded real. awesome. Yeah. It was crazy. They're, they're super awesome. I also heard a story about you guys and another pizza incident I mean we were known for looting dressing rooms but <laughs> I'm just I'm just because the best time to do it is when they're fucking playing you yeah. know what I mean well, yeah. Well, yeah go check out their bus, so go check out the hot they need yeah. if you're on yeah. the bus I mean well they're, cool. they're on stage they got as soon as they hit the stage you're like alright and there was ah, we're like Dress room. Like, and we'll see what the, let's see what they got. Let's check the hospitality. Here. Yeah. You know, we we're like mice. <laughs> they set mice. Tra- they set drop hammer traps in there. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a his, his would his would be a six pack of bush light with a big mouse trap on it. <laughs> Gets him every time. Oh yeah, I'm a sucker for that. And that would be like a big set of boobs or something. Like that. <laughs> I get right in that. Snap, snap. I got you. <laughs> what? I can't play. Oh, so, oh, drop hammer. You ever have a problem with drop hammer getting in your dressing room? <laughs> there's, you a, there's an infomercial. <laughs> 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 For you seven ninety nine, that? you can have two drop hammer traps. I'm just saying, there would be some dudes who would buy that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're, we're going to the Quad Cities oh, again. Oh, we're yeah. going to get those drop hammer traps. We're going to Moline. Yeah, get the, get the bush light trap. <laughs> <that guy. laughs> They're all at Rock, Oklahoma, talking about it. Yep. Uh, we're going to the Quad Cities. Yeah. Guess who's opening up? <laughs> <laughs> gotta watch. Gotta watch them drop hammers there in the Midwest. Yeah. <laughs> that drummer's a klepto. <laughs> It'll have you sign a you bunch know, of shit. You know what? I stole I stole the the thing that said rat dressing room. He sure oh, shit. I was gonna, and he got it before I got it. <laughs> right, right I was up. at least waiting for him to leave. Right. And he like, no, they're on stage. They're probably walking out. Oh, what the fuck? Where, 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 where do we go? They're walking into the closets and shit. <laughs> well, that's catering. I thought our room was before catering. I saw a couple people doing that. They couldn't find the dressing room. Oh, okay. man. They're big stars. They should go to find the dressing room. They well, should have guys that... Right this way, sir. Well, about all that, about your wall of fame... I was really impressed with that when I went, went over to your house the last time and, and it really bothered me because I didn't have the foresight to really think about well you, you should probably get their autographs Brian while you're here so that you have this as a memento you know when you get older mm-hmm. and, and I never did that shit and Terry did every time and, and to a fault because sometimes I didn't even really care to get their autographs at the time and that and that's I'm not saying anything bad, but he did, and now he's got this really cool area where he's got everything, autographs and picks and drum heads and all these things, and all you got to do is ask. I just always looked at it like if you're opening for them kind of bands, it's an unsaid thing that you don't fuck with them. Right. Just try to be cool about it. And yeah, that's going to be your respect. best plan of attack is to not go up to them and like, you know, try to grab Sebastian Bach's hair or something, you know. Right. I didn't do that. No? <laughs> Brian grabbed Sebastian Bach's I Bach just hair. about didn't even ask him if I can get a picture with him just because I didn't want to bother him. I right. Could, I, I could be, could have ruined the whole show. It was like, who is this asshole talking to me? I'm not going on. You know what right, I mean? Right. I didn't want to be that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because oh, nobody was really talking to him because he marched in, He's, went right to his dressing yeah, room and, right. and disappeared. Yeah. And didn't come out again until it was showtime. And then he played a set and he went back to his dressing room and disappeared again until like half uh, half an hour of rat set he came out and stood on the side the whole time oh he did yeah and, and I asked him I said my wife you know, would like to have a picture with you and, you know she's pregnant and stuff will you take a picture with her and, and my son that would be really cool you know the baby and then uh, he was like sure and he went over there and the camera didn't work the first time and then he's like and then the oh. camera didn't work the second time and then the third time he's going <laughs> which, which was a little blurry but it came out really good because he looks pissed you know? yeah. yeah so anyway he was get, he was kind of getting fed up with me a little really bit. but when he was waiting to go on he was standing over in the corridor there waiting to go on mm-hmm. and, and I go that's Sebastian Bach you know what I mean and and I'm a fanboy I mean that's that right. that man right there is is you know uh, Skid Row Slave to the Grind is a pinnacle 
album to me as far as developing what style of singer I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Not that I ever reached it, but that's what I was aiming for. Right. I wanted so bad to be able to sing like Sebastian Bach. I mm -hmm. mean, that, that he just did, does it for me. You know what I mean? His voice and the delivery and the, all that stuff, you know. And and there he stands, and I'm like, I got I to gotta draw my inner Terry right now, man. <laughs> I gotta draw that's my, what we're going to call it. See, I'm super personable, and I yeah. can like... Go up to somebody sometimes and be like, you know, your butt stinks. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, it's all right, Terry. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, get, I get away with a lot of things that I shouldn't. But sometimes Brian, he scares people. Yeah. But <clears throat> well, I, but when I tried probably, to talk to Sebastian Bach, he was like, get out of my way, little man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I came out to like his elbow. Yeah. 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 That dude is big tall. dude. Big he is. But he did say hi. I mean, That's cool. I, I can't rip on him. Penny forced me to get my picture taken with him. It forced you? Yeah. Because I walked by him and, well, she, and I was like, have a good show. You know, because I didn't want to bug him because right. he's going to go up, you know, and she's like, get your ass back there. <laughs> I'm like, all right, all right. So I was like, Mr. Bach, can you take a picture? Mr. Bach. Mr. Bach. Mr. Bach. Did you really wow. call him yeah. Mr. Bach? Well, Jeez. It's not like I'm on a first name basis yes. with the guy. You're supposed to call Yeah, him. you are. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Sebastian Rocco. You spend at least $100 in your life on his ass. You can call him Sebastian. <laughs> yeah, I think at that point, right? Kind of. So... Yeah, I mean, and you know, and for Mr. me, Bach. I mean, listen, I, I came up on, when I was, you know, uh, falling in love with rock music, right. we talked about this, I was listening to Rat, mm -hmm. I was listening to Dokken, I was listening to Skid Row, I was listening to all these bands, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't listen to Lita Ford much, Right. And, you know, I just didn't, I didn't know, I like the Kiss Me Deadly thing, because she was hot as fuck, but oh, yeah. aside from that, I, I wasn't really like, eh. You know, right. So, um, very talented, but just wasn't my my calling card. But anyway, for most of the part, for most part, that whole bill was filled with heroes. Oh, yeah. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It was cool going down the hallway, and you were like, you couldn't swing a dead cat without hitting a famous dude that you remember seeing. Oh, totally. In, right. in Circus Magazine. <laughs> yeah. 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 If somebody has been with somebody else. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Sean McNabb. God damn. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it was, it it, was kind of spooky. And, and my cherry yeah. got popped really quickly being there, because I just got in the back door, and I know, okay, it, the first two minutes is going to be Terry giving me titty twisters and smacking me in the head. <laughs> and, 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 I want to make sure and, and, and making fun of my man titties or something. He's got to do something. I just to need to be comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Set, yeah he, so. he got to make me comfortable. He punches me in the dick or acts uh, like he's gonna. Do he do do it all the time. He goes <laughs> and he acts. I go. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. I, I always just act like I'm gonna do it because it's funny because he's he's pretty quick. I get him. jumpy sometimes. You know what I mean? I'm trying to come in on cool shit. This is the big time, man. I might run and he's. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and so you know anyway so i get in the building i go through my my you know my the smoke thing yeah. <laughs> you're gonna dry him on yeah like, yeah his the wings are out he's got the, his cape yep. on he's like what the uh -huh. hell <laughs> and then I go, what's up brad <laughs> and then and then, and then it's right, like, back yeah, right back down to right, 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 right. the only guy that has intro music back there right. you know <laughs> <laughs> you guys got it all wrong, man. <laughs> so anyway, I get backstage. Right, right, I get to the I wireless. I show up back there. You know, we're waiting for this. And I'm like, what's it going to be like back there? I have no idea how it's going to go yet. I just know that, that all my heroes, are, a lot of my heroes are going to be there. And how am I going to, you know, how am I going to deal with that when I, when I see them? And uh, we get, well, or if we get to see them, I don't right. know. And we get there, and Terry's staging his drums right inside the back door. They're like kind of getting them together, making sure everything's there. And our amps are in there and stuff. And, and, and I walk in, I'm just kind of looking around the place. The girl checks me and gives me our wristband. And uh, not even three minutes later, the door cracks open, and in walks Warren D. Martini and Cavazzo. Yep. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you see them, and you recognize them. And I'm like, well, here it is, man. What do you do? Right. And they're just dudes, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. showing up to a show in Moline, you know, and they see us, and they're like, shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. oh, no. You know what I mean? Yeah. They got their, their pack, backpack yeah, and shit. Yeah, they all wore backpacks. Yeah. Like college kids. Yeah. They yeah. wore backpacks. So. Yeah. And so, you know, <laughs> and they're trying to kind of go around us as much as they, I'm not saying they were being dicks, but they didn't know no, who right. we were, you know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like, well, these guys ain't on the tour with, right. you know? And so, uh, yeah, so, and and that was really cool to see uh, Warren Martini. And then, like I said, I, I got a little aggressive this time because I'm 40 years old. I might not have too many opportunities to do this anymore. Right. So I asked him, you know, I'd talk to him and mm -hmm. and uh, Stephen Piercy and and then Sebastian Bach and 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 everybody mm -hmm. that I wanted to talk to, and it was really really pleasant. 
so you don't feel like you left anything there that you did not want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like you, I wish that I got to, I could talk to Sebastian Bach more than just hey, can you take I got a to tell listen. I got to tell Warren D. Martini that he's a big, big chunk of what I do on as far as a guitar player. And he didn't know if I was any good or not. He could have been like, well, I don't even know what the hell you do. But Warren was when you were talking to him there on the side of the stage. That I, I mean, it's. You know, this tiny little stupid thing, but he actually asked Bryce, "How did you guys a set go?" Really? And and to me, it sounded very genuine. And I was, and wow, was, Brian was stunned for a second. He was kind of like, "Oh, oh, it, it went all right." You I thought he, I thought he said, "You're done with your set now, go." <laughs> 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 you guys are done. Get that shit. Get out of here. No, what, that whatever bad. you say, Mister Warren D. Martini. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Mister Bob. Wow, so Mister D. Martini. <laughs> So you just wish you would have talked to Sebastian a little bit more. I wish I could have told him how much I, uh, you know, and that's the thing. Then he he's he's probably like me in that sense, and just here comes another guy. Right. Oh, I love your vocals. I love the. I love how you sing this or whatever. And then like I know how that feels. Like whatever you know, he's probably like doesn't. Everybody that's a singer has some sort of uh battle with security. Okay. It's, it's a fact. David Lee Roth's the only one that don't. Right. <laughs> yeah. But and he can't sing no more, so <laughs> he, got right. his, he got his gift taken I'm away. I'm pretty sure yeah. that why people want to why would I mean people listening, why would you choose to stand in front of a room of people that are, as soon as you are in their vision are being judged. Right. First of all, and then as soon as you open your mouth and make a sound, another judgment's made. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as your style of music is out, another judgment. And then you're con- they're constantly judged why would you want to put yourself in that situation because you have a you have an insecurity Mm -hmm. and you're trying to make you know you're trying to make yourself feel better trying to get that acceptance absolutely or torture yourself you know what i mean (laughs) that kind of thing yeah Yeah, so it's it's different than being a cutter yeah (laughs) it's the same thing but just different yeah it's more of a creative (laughs) thing but is there anything else that you wanted out of that experience, or did you get? You know, I would I would have liked to get my picture with Sebastian, but he's just he was busy, right? And, and he it wasn't that he he did say hi to me when he walked by me and mm-hmm. stuff, but he just he just came right off stage. That was the only time I really was next. Oh, to him, okay. So okay. I was like, hey man, good show. Hey, thanks man. And he was gone, was like, whoosh, like a tornado. I mean, right. the dude is on a mission. Like yeah. every, every time, he yeah, be out of there. Yeah, I was the first to high five him when he came off stage. He must have thought I was a roadie or something. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, so it's like good show, man. And I went like this. I had to jump a little bit. But yeah. Dude, I, he and, is tall. Yeah. yeah. And he and he when he high fived me, he meant it because he about fucking knocked me out. Really? Oh, like me <laughs> knocked me over. But how about anyway. you, Jerry? Did you get everything or do? You- yeah, I mean the talking to the people and stuff was <clears throat> was neat. But my goal for that whole show was to have the experience that we did. Right. You know that's really what I was hoping for, and I was really really worried that things weren't going to get documented. You know, pictures and video and all that kind of stuff because. Of our previous experience with the Miley Crew thing, and right. looking back on that, you know, it, it kind of was like, man, I don't want that to happen again. And this is, you know, our hometown arena, mm-hmm. and blah blah blah. And I was like, I'd want to us to be able to look back, you know, five years, ten years from now, and go look at all this, look like, at how cool we right. were. Well, yeah, yeah. And it's not even just, you know, and it's no, more than it just the, like the, that. It's more than just the, the time we were on stage. Too, mm-hmm. it was just everything leading up to it, and the, you know, afterwards, we're hanging out, the connection, know, the everything. yeah, and just with the whole, the and, whole thing was right. just. We and, almost got a documentary, don't we? Yeah, well, has, have you guys awesome. watched any of that? Have the pictures coming uh, in? You guys are happy with? I've seen some stuff that my friends let taped. Let me, let me. YouTube, but that was I need to thank Mark Dettel. For sure, oh, he he, took some he, took some good he, he blasted. Really good if he pictures. would have been there, there'd be a lot of pictures that we wouldn't have, and and, right. and that was like a, a last kind of thought thing. We're like, um, dude, we don't have any passes left. He's like, do you want me to shoot pictures? I'm like, yeah, but I'm sorry, dude, I can't. His camera is sweet. Yeah, wow. and I don't know how he does it, but he got some really really pro shots he, of us. Yeah. He was clear in the. I know he walked around actually. He went and got different angles. Yeah, but a lot of the good ones that I've seen are clear up from the box. The stage left. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he's just like sticking his head out the window of the the, the big press box. Yeah. yeah, but we've got. Wow. I mean, there's you know a lot of other people were taking pictures. Awesome. We got some you know people put some video up on YouTube your, already. Your wife got some good I, pictures. I, I, Penny did a good, She's great got job. Five hundred plus pictures that I have not even had a chance <laughs> to go through yet. So, wow. Like I said, I, yeah. I, I'm I am very happy that we've got all this stuff. We had C J Crawford, you know, doing the video. <laughs> Backstage with us, awesome. right, yeah. and you know, just kind of taping all the the all this kind of it's stuff. The rock rock That's a, yeah. I'm feeling a, a drop hammer exposed coming. <laughs> and uh, 
<laughs> and Mike, and I want to thank Mike Freeberg too yep. from from Eleven Fifty Two. He let yep. me use his rig. He's got that. Uh, he had a really sweet rig that, that that worked for me, and he let me use that for the show. And, right. uh, and it sounded killer out front from the videos. Sound, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, and and I know that a lot of people, uh, as soon as they see videos on YouTube and all that, and they they want to immediately uh, let me know what their take is on it. And I've you know I've heard of what people say, and ninety percent of everybody uh, thought that it sounded really really good, and that we did a good job. And that, and that's and for me anymore, I'm gonna grade everything that we do on a pass fail thing instead of a. Because be honest, I blew the end of Walk with the Brave, the solo and that thing. I, I I tripped over it because I I started to take it in what was going on and forgot how to play guitar. Right. <laughs> It was hard. What, it, it, I, was it intimidating? I, done I looked down a lot, but if you looked up, you're like, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> it's the same thing. Was, was it intimidating then? I mean, Shock. absolutely. I mean, just, oh, absolutely. Yeah. We're yeah. not, we're not, we've never played an arena before. No. Right. You know, we're just a, another local band like right. everybody else that, you know, maybe played, in, you know, in clubs. We've gotten lucky know. a few times and yeah. had some pretty sweet gigs, but we're not no and, better. And the reason is, is because we stuck else. with our guns and played the music that we love, which is uh, shit that fits really well with. 80s bands right and so we get thrown into that that well, whole thing there's a happy medium though i mean you the you're not 80s bands i mean people know that we we're not I, most of know, the people associate that style of music a, with the 80s, let's think, let's okay. just say Probably. the diet that was eaten to make the drop right. hammer turd there you go there you <laughs> consisted go. of uh, oh my. Wow. you you could you could that, see that, that's oh, yeah the yeah. show's over right yeah. 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 that's it okay <laughs> let it finish this nutrition <laughs> like like right. skid, right. skid row would be like corn like the vegetable corn right. and there's you could see it in the turd very prevalently kiss yeah some liquid kiss in there that's what holds it all together really is the, the kiss kiss glue like, oh he's got a lot of kiss, kiss that turd is really stout it's peanut butter Gene sounds to be selling that next week kiss peanut butter it'll hold your, your shit together alright so we kind of know here but why did you start playing music what got you kiss man kiss Honest, and, had, and playing drums yeah I had two older cousins they had kiss alive too okay and when you open that thing up and there's the fire and yep. all the blood the and cat and, it's yep. and and I'd listen to that thing Endlessly, right? And they also had Kiss, Kiss, like the first mm -hmm. album. And I would sit there all day with big old cans on, just like these, except for I think they were more like a beige. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, uh, instead of Smurf head white, <laughs> Smurf head you. white. <laughs> they were like these fifty dollars cheaper than the black ones. <laughs> what is going on, RoboCop? <laughs> no. What's that guy on Star Trek? Yeah, Jordy. Jordy. Uh, no, they used to try to get me out of their hair because right. they were out shooting BB guns and they were slingshots. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were ornery, and I was too little to indulge yet. And uh, they're like. You know, listen to this shit and get out of my hair. Right. And you know, you like hearing that doo -doo 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 -doo, with the drum solo mm -hmm. and yeah, it's like damn. And I was like, I was five or six years old, and I knew like the that's next, it. The next thing I knew, I had Tinker Toys and buckets yep. and oh yeah, I ruined a lot of my dad's buckets. We lived on a farm and mm -hmm. I, I ruined a lot of his stuff by beating it to death. <laughs> <laughs> when, I was, when I was fifteen and it was Christmas Eve, I finally got my first oh. drum set. Wow. And then I turned 16 June that next summer, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm out in the bar. And, oh. And then my mom used to have to come and watch me because, you know, your son's always 16. He's not supposed to be in here. Ah. And I ran into that a lot when I was a kid, but I was getting paying gigs within a year. Of really? Getting the drum set, yeah. Wow. I'm nice. A, I, and I've, I've only quit a couple times. I, I, you know, like a whole year, mm -hmm. maybe or two in however many years um i've not been playing you know what i mean really i've been pretty solid the whole time just like jerry i mean nice. we don't take no time off it's right time. right let um, me let me just say real quick that the whole kiss thing <clears throat> as you go around you're going to get similar answers right um but <laughs> but for me and terry kiss has a certain uh it, that's what brought us together literally right i mean yeah. that's where i i there uh, a buddy of ours scott uh goodyear was having an after party after the Kiss reunion uh, show down by the Mark. He had, oh, okay. he had a he had a, yep. a shop down yep. there that's just right across the tracks from the the oh, Mark. Okay. And after the show, we were to go to his party, and and we showed up there, Tony and I, and um, he was there, and and he had you know somebody had told me you know that's your dude, man. You know what I mean? That's who you need. Right. And I just went up to him. I was like, dude, I got this <laughs> thing going on, man. Listen, yeah. man. You know, you know, you know any kiss, man? You want to jam right now? Because he didn't want to wait to try out. He's like, "Fuck it, let's jam right now." I know the dude's playing. Let's, right. uh, 
Let's get up there. Sam, Sam yeah. Leon, my friend Sam oh, Leon, yeah. was yep. playing guitar with these guys. So the first time, I think, band. isn't that the first time we ever played yep. together? Yep. And we got up and played some Kiss tunes at the, like the, the party? Three or four or five. And We pretty went, much took over the party. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I felt... It was kind of rude what we did about it. Yeah, yeah it I fell out. in love with Terry immediately. I mean, yeah. just the way that he, he approached it and just everything. Even, even though we weren't playing it perfect, we were playing it together. Yes. And we were playing it the way that we both wanted to play it. Mm-hmm. And we could feed off of each other that way. I knew... He, we, we were doing endings like we've been rehearsing for it was like 10 oh, years. really? Yeah, like we've been playing together for... Yeah. Because I'm feeling this one going... Bow, bow. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. he would we would both kind of feel on. the same thing. Yeah. It was you know, ridiculous. and then and that's how, you know yeah. that's how I met him. So Kiss has a real big you know, that's how we got together. We just played Kiss tunes. And right. it's ironic that that show was at the well back it was the mark then, but right. at the iWireless and then a thousand years later <laughs> yeah. there we are. There the you guys whole, are. You know, the cosmos and mm-hmm. God and this stars, and that. Never, never, stars lined up. Never thought of that. And it's all back right yep. where it yep. all kind of started for all of us. I never even thought of that. Yeah, I really. I, I mean, it was it was a spiritual experience for me to to play at that place. Awesome. Honestly, I mean, I know it's you know it's not Madison Square Garden, well, but, blah blah. But for us, right, it is Madison yes, Square Garden. Yeah, 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 at least. Right. And then to, and then also to get treated so awesome mm-hmm. by everybody, the staff and and you know it was it was super cool. Right. What about you, Jerry? What got you going? Um, Kiss Alive 1 was the first record I ever owned. Yeah? And uh, I didn't, like, actually, st- you know, I didn't listen to it and go, oh, I want to be a musician kind of thing. Right. I just listened to it. Oh, that's really cool. You know, fast forward when I was, like, 13, 14 years old, you know, some guys I knew were starting to play, and they needed a bass player. Like, mm-hmm. Jerry, we need a bass player. And I'm like... Okay, I'll learn. I guess you right. know. Yeah, you got a bass yeah. in your basement. Well, you know, we had, you know, we, had, we, had a, we had a friend that you know. Right. My, my parents had a friend that played in the band, that played oh. the bass, and he was no longer playing. So you know, I bought it. We bought it for like fifty bucks or whatever it was, and you know, I started learning these songs that these guys are playing and whatever. And of course, you know, since I had listened to Kiss all that time, I was like, well, yeah, I can be Kiss. It was cool, you know. Right. You're like, oh yeah, yeah. 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 You know, so. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, kind of how I got into that. So, really? See, we're on the same boat. Yeah. yeah. And and to find. Like we talked about earlier, to find the fourth beetle <laughs> right. that is a kiss geek, yeah. a hair farmer, yeah. can put up with alcoholism and egoism, <laughs> <laughs> that, can, that likes wives and kids, yeah. we're, we're all in that boat. You know, shit, dude. It's yeah. hard, and it has to be a shred monster. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a lot. I could play a couple power chords, and I don't have any hair. <laughs> then you, That's it. Uh, See, yeah. the, you got to have at least two uh, of the three. Yeah, things. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. There's, a few, there's, there's some criteria to be in this. God. I welcome the cat that can uh, fill them. You shoes. guys are buttholes. You know that, that <laughs> we are. I know. I'll I be honest. I don't with like it. you guys anymore. We're, we're, you I love think us. you know you do. I think I'm over the whole the whole hair thing. I think if we found well, the right dude cool that was spiky hair, or at least like a bunch of eyeliner, or yeah, at least a bunch of tattoos, something. I could buy a sleeve. He's got and oh, kind of mohawk oh, my hair. I've seen those. Those are neat. Yeah. I just went out, I just went out and got the real thing. <laughs> the adrenaline dump happened for me probably about the third song in, and I was like, okay, and that's okay. That's that my next yeah, question. This is what you're used. You've done this before. Get you know, get over it. It took a minute. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you you got to take it in at the same time. You got to pay attention to what you're doing and right. do what you do. And that and I think that's where we get our dose of man. You know, these people do this every night. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean how, you know, they're used to it. We, they, you know, we. My adrenaline didn't. I had to literally calm myself on stage and go, Brian, you're gonna you're gonna wear yourself out. You're gonna faint. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Because we open we had to open with Deuce, yeah. and, and, which is a tradition kind of with us. Is right. if we pick a song to open with, it's got to be a Kiss song. Yeah. Right. And it's, and we pick it's Deuce. All, it's all the big circle. And uh, <laughs> yeah. So you know, we, circle of life. The circle. Yeah, I'm sure. You know. Uh, <laughs> and and so Jerry sings that one, and and so I got to just play guitar and run around on stage for a song, and I was blessed for that because then I got to look around. Right. But I was so scared. Scared <laughs> that I didn't. Well, the, you know yeah. what I mean? the lights were still on. You could actually still see people. It's like, damn, this is a big old room. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a yeah. big old room. All those seats up there. Yeah. yeah. This, yeah. Ain't, this, this ain't the Hawkeye Tap. No. Yeah. No, it was not. It looked like a chair warehouse, but. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, still you awesome. really, still so you know, so that was funny. Yeah. It took me like three seconds. <laughs> yeah, oh, like, it did. I've seen pictures. It did look like a chair. It was still cool as hell. God, it was so. It was cool. like 
Son of a bitch. If everyone in the chairs had a person there, we would be kicking it out. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. A chair warehouse. That's a who gets yeah. I told him, I, that, you know, he sent me a, this. I'm gonna, we're going to leave this on the show. All right. The other day, I was messing with him, and I sent him a text message, and he says, You need a Snickers. <laughs> That's all Cause he said. He, well, he sent me a message saying, You need to get, check out the new Bruno Mars, man. Bruno Mars Some, song. I love it. Right. It's, and he, he's it's always called, trying to... It's called Gorilla. And I was trying to Culture me or something. No, I tried to turn him on to stuff that he wouldn't necessarily... Right. N- you know, hear or whatever. Because yeah. he don't listen to the radio. He's like a talk radio geek or something. But right. what he don't really know is that I am really Bruno Mars. <laughs> Sign my boot. So, <laughs> no, I, 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 I like this song, and, and I was texting him. I was like, "Cause it's it's cool," and 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 he don't never pay no attention. And so he like, sends me this text out of the blue. It's like Terry. He's like, "Beat I'm like, "God damn it!" He's cleaning yeah. carpet. Fire yeah, or, or I'm trying to do whatever I'm doing. And, and uh, wow, for that's yeah. I'm, just like, the table ended I'm glad, glad you said it. Do whatever I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know me. <laughs> anyway, so I'm trying. I'm trying to. It had to be said. And never mind. The story don't matter. Yes, it does. So I sent you a text about checking out Bruno Mars. Yeah, and then I just said, uh, "Do you need a Snickers or something like that?" So it was funny. Know. I laughed all afternoon. And then I got to give credit to my wife for that because she said she had said that to me earlier in the day that I laughed my ass off because I was being a bitch or something to her. And then I wasn't even being a bitch. I just wanted you to listen to that. Song. I was being something, and she goes, "You need a Snickers." <laughs> And, and I don't eat Snickers, but you know I did need a Snickers, Snickers by the way. So that is a hoot. Yeah. So it, you know, it took me a couple songs to calm down and 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 adjust to the situation and go, okay, you're playing at the iWireless wireless right now, uh, th- and it's going to end pretty soon. So open your eyes. Right. And that, and then once I did that, and I calmed down, and I realized that I just trusted in what I do, mm-hmm. and that's right around when I fucked up the solo to walk with break. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's no real reason in the world why um, Drop Hammer shouldn't uh, play. I mean, the scene has changed so much that there's a there's an avenue now for original shows. I mean, right. you know, it, you know, thank God for Rascals and that. Mm-hmm. You know, we kind of have a venue now that mm-hmm. we can go do, and. Uh, and so we're we're thinking, you know, what's keeping us from from doing this? You know, why why are we not doing it? Mm-hmm. If there's people that still like the material and and we like it, why right. not? Right. So, oh yeah. So we we I kind of got on the horn with Terry and I said, you know, I think that if we're going to do that, if we're going to continue to play, we probably should go in the studio and re-record some of the things that we did then and 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 kind of get a new product out. And so we're kind of aiming towards putting out a. Uh, another record like it was possibly our first record oh okay and and uh kind of go out and enjoy it and, and put something in people's hands that stands up to the you know the the recorded work of today you know mm-hmm. what i mean and mm-hmm. and present it in that light and go out and have fun doing it why right. not so you plan on re-recording some stuff and possibly doing i want a couple shows a year i want to re-record i want to re-record the stuff and play a few times a year I'd even like to maybe like do a music video. You know what really? I mean? Uh, you know that'd be cool. Um, just for fun. You know what I mean? Right. Why not? I mean, well, you at know, this point, it's for yeah, not, exactly. not, it, is, not, it is for fun at this well, point. Yeah, because we're not. You know, one. I mean, not that it wouldn't be awesome, but we're not right. really asking to be like giant superstars. Right. But it's almost like we owe it to some people, some <laughs> right. fans, some fans of ours yeah. that have really stuck with us to mm-hmm. deserve. Honestly, right. the, the quality that is supposed to sound like you know that right. they're they're gonna like it better. I mean, oh totally, because it's because I mean it's gonna sound it's good. gonna sound better than it did back in the day. But uh, I, I said this before about eleven fifty two, and I and I think it stands true with this band. I'd never really realized it, but the people that are Drop Hammer fans have earned being Drop Hammer fans. They they are part of it. They've given themselves. You know, they didn't. They have they, stuck through us through a ton. Of absolutely. Stuff. There are going to be people that, imme- that hear us and immediately go, oh, the, I don't like them. And mm-hmm. then people are weeded out. But the people that do like us become family with it. Yeah, you know right, what I mean? Right. And and you you earn your spot in the in the family. And 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 why wouldn't we go celebrate with these people? Right. And hopefully along the way we, we make some new family members right. and and uh, have a good time with it. Because we're, we're we're under no. Uh, you know, illusion that we think that we're, you know, kiss or something. Right. We, we we just want to go out and have fun playing rock and roll music, and we're we're not dead yet. You know what I mean? Right. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And, and why the hell not? You right. know what I mean? And I think you get- I, I agree that we at least should play a few times here, if not for our fans because right. we, we love them, but at least for us because it's nice for us to get together. Yeah. Just, well, and, there's a there's a weird 
magical thing when we play together. It, and and you it's not an ego. Not, no, no, we're no. But there's damn, some, let's, we we feel what each other is. Gonna right. Do. Let's call it what it is. Like you can see bands, and that's fine and good bar bands and whatever it may call it. But you can watch a band and see like, okay, this is next level band. Three Years Hollow has it. Eleven Fifty Two. You know, you just you go and yeah. you see that, and you and guys can go a, and watch a, you guys. There's a chemistry for each of those bands and too. The, yeah. it's very see, and that's and the, the connection. The, the, the girls, well, yeah. and I think it's a waste for you guys not to play together once in a while. You don't have to do it every weekend, whatever. You know, make it something special, and you guys will get something out of it. You guys are at a different stage in your life, and people can see that. And it, I just think it's good for you guys and the fans. So yeah. you're saying they can tell that we're fat? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to talk about Listen, that. Listen, a different stage in our life is the geriatric stage, <laughs> I believe. The, uh, we, had a, we have to have a wheelchair I, right I did see some Meta, I did see some Metamucil backstage. Uh, yeah, there's, there, that, there was a jar of it in my pocket in some of the pictures <laughs> on the on the, the IRL. Like, What's that in your pocket? <laughs> is that your bong? Well, no, right, that's my Metamucil, man. Yeah, right, right before go time, I had this vocal ease because I was freaking out. I was getting nervous. I was like, I don't want to blow this. So I went and got this vocal ease shit right. trying to see if that would help my throat out and make sure it was nice and how'd that work out for you um well it looked good in my pocket all right <laughs> <laughs> oh mr minor Ooh. um is that, anyway is that is that vocal ease in your pocket or <laughs> see me yeah, so and i also wanted to thank uh dwyer and michaels uh oh, that definitely. when when because it didn't hurt that when they announced this they announced this as like the best band on the planet right yeah you know like well yeah and, and nothing against the other bands but it's like all of a sudden we're standing there waiting to play at the battle and and uh they're like, well, I remember in 1996 when Billy called me and said the best band in the fucking world just recorded a record here and you should come down and hear it. Or just right, something, something, whatever, whatever, yeah. something like that. That's what I heard. But it was, it was pretty, <laughs> yeah. pretty well, crazy. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway he and he, the, the announcement that we got, it was almost like, really? You know, okay. Right. And, you know, so I wanted to thank the... That that was really cool. All right, we, we're real fortunate to have a lot of support. Right yeah. now, yes, we are. For you guys. Very fortunate. We're spoiled rotten, honestly. Yeah. All right, <laughs> <laughs> can't yeah. lie, man. We're, we're, All right, we're let's are. start wrapping this up before people start shutting us off. Jerry, is there anything you'd like to add and say? This is your chance to Just shut to, these guys up and no, let it out. Uh, my thing I really just want to say is a huge, huge thank you to anyone that has ever supported Drop Hammer, being at a show, being on Facebook, being half you know way across the country and saying good luck, guys. Thank you so much. We would not be able to do any of this without you. And it's kind of what started us talking about doing it a little bit more. <laughs> yep, for sure. Terry? I would like to uh, agree with that wholeheartedly. Without our rock-solid fans out there, uh, none of this would be cool. Uh, we all really have really awesome wives that take very good care of us and put up with a whole boatload of crap. Right. Do you agree with that? Like right now? Like, what do you mean you got to get home at 3.30 in the morning? Well, I can't help her. Uh, and, and super supportive, and, you know, they, they do put up with a lot of stuff. Uh, but, yeah, um, I don't know. We're just, like I said before, we're, we're, we're spoiled, right. honestly, because we've got to do a lot of things that maybe, you know, your average band from around here hasn't got to do. Right. And it, it isn't from not working hard or, you know, because we know this guy or know that guy. It's really because we did, we busted our ass Put for the a long in. time. It, twice a week, man. We were on every week. Practice, 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 like stupid religiously. Mm -hmm. I mean, it isn't because we didn't pay our dues. It's just that our dues have finally started to blossom sometimes. It might take 12, 15 years <laughs> for them to blossom. <laughs> but, but, you know, you got you to gotta take right. in the good. And uh, But, no, but thank you for anybody that's ever bought a CD or a T-shirt. One of the videos I saw from the iWireless, when the lights were still on, right. there was a chick in the front row mm -hmm. with a pit crew. It said pit crew oh, on the back. And she's, like, nice. flailing around. And, and then all of a sudden, then the lights went down. And you can't see her no more, but if you watch on there, there's a pit crew, old school pit crew, drop hammer t-shirt out nice. there in the crowd. That kind of stuff. Makes you feel good, don't She it? was the only chick, and it would look like a chair warehouse, like you said. <laughs> 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 but, but there was this, this girl down there, yeah. and, and she was having a good time and had her old school drop hammer shirt on. You can't put a price on that kind good, of thing. Good. I mean, it was cool. And Brian, I know you got a lot to say. I've said, I've said enough, probably. Yeah. You know, I don't. Yeah. I've got I've got like three thousand episodes to talk about, right? That kind of stuff, you know. All right. But <clears throat> I mean, most of the people that listen to Minor Disturbance Radio kind of know, you know, where I'm coming from on right. on that stuff. I mean, it's I'm fortunate to be uh, in in a you know in in a situation where I can I can write music and have a band to play it and and uh, whatever hype that we created or whatever for this band, I'm thankful for that, you know. Right. 
All right, I think we're going to wrap this up. We can do this again some other time if you want to have some stuff. But I want to thank you guys for coming in. I mean, like to enjoy. Uh, I've enjoyed the music for a long time. Love watching you guys. Hope you guys keep going on, doing some stuff, release whatever, play out once in a while. It's been a real pleasure being fan and friends with you guys. Definitely friends. Cool. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you for giving us your time. Yes. Yes.